Hello. Welcome to Remove Film from Trey, episode 13. Lucky 13. He's We're, doing the intro. I, yeah. Hello, <laughs> Cyraptor. <laughs> You're back. You see, we're doing the intro. He's introducing us right now. Folks, Count has a new mic. Start over. No. No, there's no starting over. It's smoother oh, than last time you were on. With a new microphone. Hello, Mortis. Hello, Slushy. Hello, Cyraptor. How are you? I got up early. And I still had to wait two Count. hours. Hello, Cyraptor. How I'm you? doing. Hi, everybody. I'm sorry you had to wait two hours. I realized something. Yeah. We don't really say who we are at the beginning. Like, Mortis says hi, and then Count says hi, and then I say hi. Mm -hmm. But, like, we... The audience would need to deduce from who we're, who we're saying hi to who we are. Yes. I'm Slush. That's, that's a problem for the audio listeners. Okay. Right, because the people can the... see our mouths flapping. I'm Count. Bleh. Put us on at work. I'm Selena. <laughs> So, uh, we love movies here. We uh, love Cyraptor, so we brought him back for another episode. Resident dinosaur expert, Cyraptor, here to watch two dinosaur films. Yeah, last time I forced everyone to watch a shitty movie that I like. And as revenge, I was forced to watch two shitty movies that nobody likes. Well, you recommended Prehysteria. It. No. I, 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 I think don't count, think I think it was Count's idea. I, and I may have made it. That does sound like it because it's a full moon production that has dinosaurs in it. Yeah, I thought that's what. Yeah. Okay. Well, whatever. I thought it was because it was full moon. My memory is bad. This is not here specifically because it's dinosaurs. I knew that Sire after and I had both seen it. So I thought it'd be fun. I thought it would be fun to revisit. I thought. It was fun. You didn't have fun? No. I had, I had a great fun. time. Uh, before we get to the movies. More, does she sound like you're in heat right now? <laughs> That's one on the in heat count. Uh, someone who is in heat is Charles Too Band. Uh, <laughs> I, just, I just wanted to say I listened to the first five episodes of Charles Band's podcast, which is on Spotify and all pod catchers uh, like us. And uh, if you follow us on Spotify, leave a review and um, a rating. I don't think Spotify does that. But this uh, this is a pretty good podcast. I recommend any movie fan, horror movie fan, listen to this. Uh, he, he talks to John Carpenter. He talks to Tom Savini. Oh. He talks to... Oh, I don't know. He talked to real people. Yeah. Well, he talks to real people and then... <laughs> And then he and, talks to actresses he's hired and talks about their brains. And e-girls. Yeah, he yeah, talks to babes. The second, right? the second half of the first three episodes, he's talking to babes. So he gets to learn about OnlyFans. He gets to learn about Giantess Fetish. Uh, and he has a great time learning about this stuff. I bet he does. It's, <laughs> it's, it's a fun podcast. Uh, you get to hear... You, it's it's kind of like the other guy sort of interviewing Charles Band a little bit. He sort of turns it around on himself a lot. That's it's, a really uh, interesting podcast like gimmick. I, it's, idea. I don't think it's on purpose. Like John Carpenter in particular is like seems really humble. I don't know. He didn't really like want to talk about himself that much, but he seems to Charles always Band I'm sure loves talking about himself. He does, but he's very interesting. It's an interesting podcast. Check it out. He but check James us Cameron out too. On. Yeah, maybe. What if we got... What if he's just into, like, flipping it around? And if we got Charles Band on the show, he started interviewing us? Well, that I, would be I, not we super interesting for him. but <laughs> You never know. Yeah, maybe. We could just, Count has a lot, a, a lot of things he's Charles done. Band. So the... Uh, the first minor movie of the week that we watched together, uh, the slushy 
wanted to watch Birdman, so we watched Birdman. I'd never seen movie, this. I was here for this. This <laughs> is the one movie I saw. Mortis and I watched the Grey Ghost episode of Batman Animated Series. And I was like, Mortis, have you seen Birdman? It's a movie about this episode, kind of. Which kind of is. Not you really. Know, <laughs> it's got similar themes. Uh, I'd say that it isn't, but I understand where Slushy's coming from to think that. Right. It's very heavily connected to Batman. Yes. Watched superhero actor. It's a very meta movie. Yes. Um, I don't know why I didn't see this. You know, I, I guess I just wasn't going to theaters or watching movies and I don't care about Oscars and shit, but this was really good. That's why I yeah. saw it. Because you'd care about Oscars. Yeah. I used to. Oh. I saw a screening of this before, I think it was like two weeks before it came out. I knew nothing about it and I was, I was blown away in the theater seeing this movie. Yeah, I bet that would I be... I thought it was okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just a lot of good performances. I think Edward Norton was really good. Uh, yeah, he was. they're all good. Who's yeah. the guy in the middle of this performance in this? <laughs> that's, that's Keaton in his disguise yeah, from the play. I, um, I don't know. It's uh, I, I here's what I thought it was about. I thought it was about uh, fame and celebrity and and numbers and how that's fake and how that affects people. I don't know. That's my take. Nope. It's just about a uh, Michael Keaton putting on a little play. Yeah. Are you saying that that's what it is about, or what you thought it was about before you saw it? Uh, that's. Well, what I thought about before I saw it was Michael Keaton putting on a little play and then he turns into Birdman for real and saves the world. That's what I honestly thought was. Okay. <laughs> that was my impression from like trailers and shit, I guess. That would be a way less interesting movie. Right. What, are you just going to leave me hanging here with my fucking uh, English 101? <laughs> reading of the film? I don't know. What? No, no. I mean, I, I, would, I would say that it's that's pretty accurate it's about like how a shitty man who found meaning he's kind of shitty well Well, i mean they're all kind of shitty but like he's just an actor well i think that's the point i think everybody's kind of shitty (laughs) right right everyone is a little shitty in their own way right yeah in life So do you think he really became Birdman at the end, or was that? I think that (laughs) I don't think he really became Birdman, no. Was he really psychic? What was that all about? What do you think? I need to watch a YouTube explainer. (laughs) Yeah, can I get a six-hour essay about this, please? Also, it starts with a shot of his ass in underwear. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Everyone complained about Lost in translation for doing that. No one complained about Birdman. Double standard. It was a different time. Lost in translation walked so that Birdman could run in his underwear. That's a good. Uh, <laughs> that's a good comparison. No, good film. Uh, not a superhero yeah. film. Uh, a human film. It has drums in it. Despite the name, Birdman is more human than most of us. <laughs> As kind of like me, me, meh, as I am on the like general movie. I'm not even meh. It's it's good. Uh-huh. I'm not saying it's mediocre or anything. But uh, the plot, whatever, I could uh, whatever. But the uh, like the cinematography and the soundtrack definitely stand out as being exceptional to me. Yeah, like the the whole I, I had for I knew about I remembered the um the whole like one take thing through the whole movie. Yeah, simulated. But uh, I I forgot they kind of played with um 
time and like s- space right while doing that the magical realism yeah, yeah. and that i thought was that was cool i, I also think, didn't i said magical realism while we were watching it i don't know that that's really the word for it like when it pans down it, it, it pans from two people doing something and then it pans to like two people an hour later the same two people oh, not, not that but like shot. psychic crap well that okay that's, that's that. sure that's magical realism but yeah Sorry, what it's are you not saying? Actually Sarah? happening though, like in magical realism, it's actually happening, right? Is that yeah, a, it's it's magical hallucination? We'll say I don't know. Is magical that an established term? Yes. 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 From what? Cinema. I, it's just a genre. It's a classification, oh. a category. I don't know who made this. Okay. What company do we know? Uh, Michael oh, Keaton. Company. I think Birdman the Movie dot com. I'm seeing. It, you know. I made the joke about Harvey Birdman. I do think this would have been cool had he been in that suit from like the the '60s show. Well, maybe it was like a, you know, like a Keaton Batman doesn't really look like the '60s Batman. So like right. maybe maybe this is Harvey Birdman. There, there like, isn't like, like an Adam, Adam West like Birdman. a West Birdman at all. Basically, right. is what I'm getting at. There's an Adam West Birdman. No. I'm saying in this universe there could exist like oh right I I get the right. Adam West of of Birdman George whereas, Clooney Birdman whereas Michael Keaton is the is the Michael Keaton the bird credit the card thing, that shit is funny Birdman of of Batman where was Avenger the thing, the thing I think is funny is that the movie is like it seems to be criticizing fans in, in to some extent. How they they just like if Birdman, if Michael Keaton, if uh, Riggin Thompson just decided that's his name in the movie, just decided to make a Birdman four, then what it a would name. it would make Buku bucks, and now he's in he's Batman again, and yeah. everybody's what, super first, happy about it. First he became no, no, happy real life to see him as Batman again. What we're talking over each other? What? Slushy said people would be happy if he was Batman again, and no one went to see that movie. Didn't well, wasn't a Batman movie. In, Did in, nobody go see The Flash? I don't know. It's the biggest like, was, box office bomb in years. Oh. Oh, well, that's cool. Good. That's the good, actually. biggest bomb ever, I think. And the worst superhero movie to ever perform. Well, they had I, that. Worse than Morbius? The worst, you know, uh, budget to, yeah. to box office. Oh, okay. Morbius, I think, probably cost like two thousand bucks or something. Right, right, right. I saw I you asked the multiverse Sorry. sequence of the Flash. You watched it on yeah. Twitter. Okay. God, it, the whole the, sequence. Like, what is it? Fifteen seconds. It's like no, it's like two, two or three minutes long. Where it's just I, like the, I, I don't too. know. I don't know what the fuck the plot of the movie is, but like, there's these floating like zoetrope globes where, in they're like flying through them and. Like the first one is George Reeves Superman into like Golden Age Flash, which I don't think they made a movie of that. The hat one. Hmm? The hat one. Yes. Yeah. The, the soccer hat one. So it's like, so you're saying this is like the season finale of Fortnite, like three seasons ago when you when they you yes. had the big <laughs> mech fight and then you and then you ran past the globes that had like Darth Vader fighting in them and shit. Yes, it's, it's exactly like that. I, I couldn't, I can't answer that, but probably. Because I, I saw that sequence on Twitter like Cyraptor, and I have seen Fortnite season whatever. How long until Disney makes something like that for real? What Did, do you mean? Didn't they? Where they just do they some kind some... of insane cro- Kingdom crossover Hearts. with every single pop property? Yeah, Kingdom, Kingdom, Hearts. Kingdom Hearts. Don't they that have some count. show where all the what Disney characters count? fuck? Yeah, they have that show that was on ABC for like Dude, 10 years. There's House of Mouse. Oh, God. And Mortis is I'm right. There saying, was like live action I'm show. saying, I'm saying, huge blockbuster movie where right. like Darth Vader gets in a fight with Captain America. It's coming. And then. Do you want that? Indian in no, the I don't want it. I'm just saying how long until it happens because it's going to happen. Why wouldn't it happen? Disney Infinity? They're looking Imagine how many fucking Funko Pops they could sell. 
Well, I don't know. All these movies are doing terrible, so maybe they're maybe they're learning a lesson. Why did Disney Infinity like die? Was that was that doing because bad? all did Toys to Life s- died? You they just like stopped doing hundreds Toys of dollars life. into it. Yeah. Who asked who made this? Amiibos, was it you right? count? I did. Yeah. It was Regency, the production company oh, behind yeah. such classics as. Free Willy. Free Willy and, <laughs> and <laughs> I don't know why I know that offhand, but I'm pretty sure WB owns the rights to Birdman, so I guess uh, it's just a coincidence. Do you think they run up against uh, ran up against like trouble with that, or also Regency Indian in the cupboard? Wow, I think. So I Probably be sure. I, mean, I feel American like they made the a cupboard, lot please. of family movies in the '90s, which had Darth Vader fighting a T Rex from Jurassic Park. There's your thing. So there you There's go. your thing. Slushy. What is like as like toys? Yeah. Yes. Have you not seen Did that? Film make slushy? them come alive. It's been. I had. I had the special edition VHS where you could turn the cover around and it looked like the cupboard and had the tiny little shitty plastic key. Yeah, I had that. And it too. came with the little Indian figure. I had that. I watched that movie a few times. I remember nothing of it. Well, that part's like maybe thirty seconds, so it's okay. Did he like bring them to life in the cupboard? Could he do that with other toys? Yeah, yes. any toys. That was the cupboard's power. Hmm. Robocop Locked was up. fighting. Yeah, I remember Robocop. Like G.I. Joe trailer. or something. That's like Mortis's favorite movie, I think. I've I love the Mortis. book. I've never seen the film. Oh. Me if either. you had that cupboard, if you had that oh, cupboard, book, mm-hmm. what toys would you bring to life? All of them. All, why would you stop? <laughs> <laughs> okay, what toys would you bring to life first? I'm looking over my shoulder. Um, Morris, Morris, do you have any girl toys? <laughs> I'll I'll go first. All my uh, Nendoroids. Probably my some... Atelier Ryza figure. <laughs> probably some Battle Beasts. I don't know. You're going to put the Nanners and Nendoroid in there and she's going to come out and insult you and then say something aimless the and then get Nendoroid. fired. I'm bringing Baltan to life. I, I think you're confused. <laughs> Baltan's going to be my best friend. Anyway, Dragon Slayer. Dude, this movie was so fucking cool. I don't this know. is one of my favorite it's movies. It's stupid. It's up its own ass. <laughs> you didn't see this, right, Sarapter? No. Have you ever seen Sarah, this? Sarapter, you should see this. No. It's very slow and boring, but it's also incredibly cool. It's got stop motion in it, right? So. I don't know. Uh, if it yes. is stop mo- th- motion, sure. it's incredibly. It's smooth. go motion, yeah. That's that's right. What is go that motion? A, it's Phil Tippett's thing where it's it's stop motion but with motion blur applied somehow, so it looks. Oh. This was great more. for an '80s movie of this era, and no one ever talks about it. They're talking about the really crappy direct to VHS movies, but never Dragon Slayer. Is it on Disney Plus? I feel like everybody. It's crappy Paramount, direct to so VHS movies. Plus. What are you talking about? <laughs> Just like crappy direct to video, all those weird barbarian movies and fantasy crap. Oh, just like Puppet Master. Yeah, I, th- I think for like '80s fantasy movies, what the ones you hear about those like Dark Crystal, Labyrinth, right? Sometimes Crawl. Legend. Not that many. Crawl. Crawl is a little. I hear about Crawl all the time. Well, I mean, it's just the circles I, I run in. That's, about yeah. Crawl. What about Crawl? What? I said I'm always hearing about it. Mm. Have you seen Crawl Count? Oh, I've seen Crawl. Okay. Did we watch Crawl, Mortis? Like, uh, I think you've seen Crawl with me ago. at least once. Yes. Anyway, yeah, we Dragon watched Slayer. it a few months back. <laughs> there's like a big city or a castle or something. There, yeah. There's a big. There is. There is a moving castle. Emperor Palpatine's in this Cyraptor. Ian Ian McDermott. He's in it for like three minutes before he gets roasted alive by a dragon. So like I watched this movie when I was like three, right? Um it was it was a movie my parents rented and you know, I was on the floor playing with toys while it was on. And I thought it was really boring and like there was no dragon and nothing happened in it is what I remembered. And then I, we watched this this week and it was really boring, <laughs> but there was a dragon in it, but then also nothing happened except there's like two really good scenes. 
So I don't, I didn't love this, but I like. I think sometimes a fantasy movie or a fantasy property, we'll say, uh-huh. a fantasy media of some sort, can be very slow. Um, and like drawn out, and it it kind of, I feel like that kind of shit happens so that you can take in the world, um in a way that doesn't really work in like period pieces necessarily, or like, you know, right. Regular action movies and things like that. Like another movie we'll talk about later that had the very slow bit that was incredibly boring and didn't do anything for the movie. I feel like in this case, it did a lot for the movie to help you just feel like you existed in the world. I agree with Um, she, I typically hate, slow paced things and I, I felt like the aesthetics in this and the actual shot on location and sets uh, added to its strength to its enjoyability where you can kind of just relax in the world that it's setting up it has I, people had great costumes I like that he used a spear the girl was cute I don't know I kind of enjoyed it You're here's right. the only thing I didn't like about this film um, yeah the spear was very clearly not straight. Yeah, it was like a little. Prop yeah, was yeah. Old. It was. It was like when you open a toy. Yeah, you, uh, they needed the to, they needed the to soak it in spear. hot water for a minute. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that that was that was the only thing I didn't like about this film because it was just very distracting to me personally. But I think everything else was fucking great. The I think acting was great. The effects were great. The dragon was fucking mind blowing. Like thinking about how good that shit looked, and it came out in 1981. Oh, it's that old? Yeah. Yeah. It was from like 87 or something. The, no, 81. The dragon looked better than Godzilla in 1998. Well, that's. Uh, <laughs> the, dragon the dragon looked, looked better, better than, than the than dinosaurs any... in prehysteria. The dragon looked, looked better incredible. than any. Yeah. Better, better than, than Dragon any, uh, Better than any film monster I've ever seen personally. I've never seen Dragonheart. Looks it's better great, than Reign of Fire. Great film monster. I haven't seen I, Dragonheart. I would say don't show this to kids because I don't think you could appreciate it as a kid. It will bore it them. It is slow paced. Oh, it it is a little me. boring, but you have to be ready for that. You need to like if you need if you want to show it to your kid, then you need to like read the hobbit to them at age five and then read the lord of the rings trilogy to them through age ages six and seven. Oh my god and like have them love it and then maybe they'll enjoy this movie maybe, maybe. yeah this is one i would have hated as a kid and probably as a teen but now i'm at that right age where i'm old and i'm uh, nostalgic for things and good real movies that I really you're would. old and you're you're jaded from yeah. the real world and you just want to escape into a, a, a fantasy realm that feels real. Slushy, have you seen Excalibur? No. But we people sh- keep talking it up. We should even watch the, it. I love it. Even the people that hated this movie in your chat when you showed it. It's true. Yeah, those, those insufferable That's bastards <laughs> seem to love Excalibur. Oh, Excalibur's so, really good. I've never seen Excalibur. So. Mortis? Tune in next week when we watch Excalibur. Is, is it like a King Arthur thing, or like it is. Okay. It's all. It is kind of long. It's probably like three hours or two and a half hours, but it's good. That's fine. I'm fine with that. You know, it's another good uh, '80s fantasy movie. What? Um, Falcon Hawk. Lady Hawk. Hawk, Hawk Lady. L- Lady Hawk. Yeah. Yeah. What Rucker? What's Lady Hawk? No, with Matthew Broderick. Oh, fuck. Is he is Rucker in that, in yeah. that? Yeah. yeah he is but Matthew Broderick is also in <laughs> I hate Matthew Broderick I don't even want to talk Save about it. Movies it. covering Matthew Broderick on this show you and me count why are we giving this fucker we a platform into, we can get into it at the appropriate time uh, by the way Dragon Slayer streaming for free on Pluto TV so there you go is it not on Tubi? Watch I assumed it was on Tubi. I don't know what the hell Pluto is. It's not on Tubi. No, it's I didn't hear this. It's not on Disney. Pluto is like it's a worse Pluto version TV. of Tubi. Yeah. It's like Tubi for all the Lifetime movies, and then 
Ooh. Occasionally movies you actually want to watch. I think Pluto also has like live shit. I'm not really sure. Sir, I heard Lifetime movies and I my mind immediately went to the Golden Girls <laughs> because I used to watch it on Lifetime. But that's not a li- that's not a Lifetime no, movie. So no. what network I, did Golden Girls premiere on? Like NBC or some shit? I want to I mean, there's only three channels back then, so it had been. So me and Count, I don't. Or I guess Slushy today. saw the the first part. Uh, me and another new, brand new horror movie. Is this brand new, Count? This is brand new. This just came out. The Flood like this week, starring Casper Van Dien, uh, J- uh, Johnny Rico from Starship Troopers. <laughs> That's right, Nikki Whalen from. The flood. <laughs> this this is better than quicksand. Uh, this is uh, this is better than quicksand. This is better than prehistoric. This is better than Godzilla. <laughs> I could take a shit better than quicksand. <laughs> okay. I like the flood. I felt like uh, it was a really solid creature feature. It's about a group of prisoners that are transferred to a police station to wait out a flood. And alligators invade the police station along with a group of mercenaries trying to break out one of the prisoners. And I thought it would, it, with a little better acting and a little better CGI, this would be a really good B movie. Be like a real was, movie. Uh, yeah. Was Casper Van Dien a mercenary? He was the mercenary prisoner that they were trying to break out. Uh, he was like the good prisoner. For some reason, most of the prisoners were like from Afghanistan. Like they yeah. had served yeah. in Afghanistan, and they were like, "Reminds me of Afghanistan." It's like, I don't know. That's just <laughs> hey, our, our vets some kind of commentary on what our yeah what our veterans have to do after they come home. I don't know. <laughs> uh, my my biggest joy from this movie was uh, count every time the alligator right. was on screen. Count was playing the roller gator theme from Roller Games. And yeah, then, was... <laughs> and then at the in the end sequence of the film, uh, CCR. What's the name of that song? Uh, have you ever seen the rain? Yeah, <laughs> Count started playing that, and it's like synced up so perfectly. I thought it was the movie, but like the movie just like didn't really have any score or music <laughs> in it. With to these speak slower, of. quiet movies, just kind of playing my own music over them. And sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. It elevated the film. But I don't know. It's If you want to watch a movie about a bunch of people shooting guns at alligators. Yeah, I mean, I think it's better than a silent movie. It's better than Asylum movies, and it's better than sci-fi channel movies. But it's not like a real movie yet. It's almost there. Almost. It's by uh, the people that make Power Rangers. Oh yeah, Saban, Saban pictures Saban. or something, <laughs> right? It's really weird. weird. It's so shitty looking the CG, but also I guess makes sense. I don't know. So, tune in next week when we watch Power Rangers twenty seventeen. Last night, last night uh, we watched Conan the Barbarian Swordsman. Mm-hmm. Uh. <laughs> wow! Very cool movie. This is this is the picture for, most for it. Um, was this on Tubi? This was on Tubi. Yes, seventy-five percent cool movie. Conan the Barbarian Swordsman is a Korean kung fu swords movie in the tradition of Hong Kong Taiwan kung fu swords movies. Uh, it's about a character named Eagle, not Conan. No, no, Ooh. he's never called Conan. Not really a barbarian either. Right. Uh, he just he's, he gets in a lot of fights and tries to get revenge. And then he learns about revenge. And, and they play the Phantom of the Opera theme. Do they? Or the, you know, the, the no, Dracula it's the Dracula. Music. Yeah, the, yeah. Dracula's theme. Every time he kills somebody for the first chunk of the movie it plays dracula's theme as he puts his sword away and then maybe there's also some stolen score from nightmare on elm street i wasn't sure about that there absolutely is it's directly lifted from nightmare uh having seen and listened to that soundtrack in my free time 
I know, I could tell. There's a there's another kung fu movie that just has the Ghostbusters theme in it. I wish I could remember what it was called. I used to I had it like bookmarked on YouTube. With them actually saying Ghostbusters or just like the No, music it, it was like the first part, like the lead in, like da da da, okay. da and and then it just like it cuts off right when the actual song would start. <laughs> but it just made me think of that. There's um, very little about this on the net. I found a Found out about this movie last night, right before showtime, and it was the backup, and we ended up having to use it, and uh, I don't really know much about it. Found out about it, we watched it, and it's, there's very little plot, he goes from place to place, as Moore says, gets into a fight and moves on, but it's kind of enjoyable. There is, like, I feel like it did have a slow middle chunk. Yeah. Sort of lost me, like... I don't know. I think most of this genre of movies do. I kept thinking of Swordsman with an Umbrella, which is my (laughs) go-to. It had a slow middle chunk that introduced like a Buddhist monk that did a bunch of things in one scene and then was talked about a bunch by the bad guy, but then never shows up again and wasn't mentioned anymore. Could it have been two movies in one combined? Maybe. Maybe. I'm wondering about that, the production side on I don't know. This seems cobbled together in ways. <laughs> what country is this from? Seems to be Korea. Korea. Okay. South, probably. <laughs> yeah, you do have to specify because of uh Paul Gasari. Oh yeah, I could never remember the fucking name. Yeah. <laughs> and Paul Gasari's not good, right? Right. It's pretty boring, but Yo, my it's daddy, kind of interesting. don't kill me, Daddy. I I love my daddy. Oh, yo, please don't kill my daddy. I love my daddy. If you, if you kill my daddy, you can punish me too. I don't know. You spoiled, you've spoiled the best part of the movie. Um, I needed to. I couldn't. I, oh, it was so fucking funny. Conan learns from someone halfway through the movie. Uh, well, maybe not learns at this point, but is told, you know, what if the guy he's hunting down has a child too? Cause he's hunting down the guy that killed his parents. Um, and then he then has to, he gets attacked by that guy who, and he finds out that that guy is one of the guys that killed his parents too. Um, and like he, that's, this is the dad of the woman he saved shortly before in the movie. And then the woman is attacking him throughout the rest of the movie, which is funny. Um, but then he fights the final dude and he goes to kill him and his tiny little daughter runs out. Who's like seven years old. And that's what the dub sounded like. Yeah, it was pretty accurate. Daddy, no! <laughs> <laughs> oh, very good dub. You know, watch Conan the Barbarian instead. It's a, that's a, you can't, you know, that's like saying if you don't want to watch Godzilla 98, go watch Sleepless in Seattle. It's a completely different movie. If you're one of those people who's seen 400 Kung Fu and Wuxia films this year alone, uh, you should check it out. I don't know. There's probably something in there you might be interested in. I would recommend Sleepless in Seattle over Godzilla 98. Now, you'd recommend a dog shit over Godzilla 98. It's probably more interesting to watch. Sorry, after, do you actually want to talk about Bicentennial, man? Sorry, that was going to sneeze. Uh, yeah, I want to talk about Bicentennial, man, for, for just a second. Okay. Uh, it sucks. It's got the Pepsi girl, though. Pepsi girl. It does have the Pepsi girl. I don't remember that. It's got the Pepsi girl. One thing I'll say about Bicentennial Man is uh, it's weird that he falls in love with the... Oh, my God. It is the... So so he's... The, the robot is basically purchased as the maid for this rich family. Uh the patriarch of which is Dr. Alan Grant. Um, he kind and, of, what Dennis Quaid? No, the actual Alan Grant. 
Sam Neill. <laughs> he kind of starts out as like a C-3PO kind of dude, doesn't he? Yes, he, he starts He starts out as the, the robot on the left here. On the right, sorry. I don't know left from right. We've been through this. Uh, but the adult... So he's called... I, I didn't know this going in. He's called Bicentennial Man because he lives for exactly 200 years. Yes. So there you go. Uh, the... The adult, the grown-up version of the Pepsi Girl, who's the daughter of who's, the family. what is the Pepsi Girl? Why is she Do Pepsi? Remember, don't remember those. She was in like Pepsi commercials in the nineties. Doing what? Drinking Pepsi. It's the, was she, she was the one a, who like offered offered Boomer Esiason a Pepsi or whatever? Sure, I don't know. No, that's Kylie Jenner. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh no, not the fucking no. Yes. No, that's not the Pepsi girl. Anyway. Uh, anyway. She's, that's, I'm wrong. She's Jesse Eisenberg's brother, not Haley Joe Osmond. She's Jesse Eisenberg's brother. She, she is Jesse. She is Jesse she's Eisenberg's sister. brother. She's the little Pepsi girl. You don't remember her? I remember the Pepsi girl. I was, I, when, the, as soon as she showed up in the movie, I'm like, is that the Pepsi girl? And it, it was. Anyway. I don't remember commercials. It's not, not important. The fact that it's a Pepsi girl isn't important. The, the important thing is that she grows up she and grows falls up in love with her brother. Darkness. She falls in love with her brother, the robot, who she has fucking grown up with. So that's weird. Uh, but the robot. Have the you robot never is, watched anime? Me? Yeah. That happens all the time. That doesn't make it okay. <laughs> anyway. The robot who's played by Robin Williams, by the way, completely wasted as both a comedic and dramatic actor in this film. Uh, the, he does not reciprocate her her uh, attractions. However, her granddaughter looks exactly like her. Is played by the same actress who uh, I can't remember her name, but she plays Miss Honey in the uh, Matilda movie. Yeah, and she's in Army Darkness. And I guess she's an army of darkness. Uh, he falls in love with her. The Pepsi girl? The granddaughter of the Pepsi girl who looks like the adult version of the Pepsi girl. It skips a generation. Oh, they okay. Say. Okay. Yeah, I, I understand. That, I don't think that's how it works, but they say it, it skips a generation that you look identical to your, your ancestors. <laughs> So he only starts trying to become a, a human. He gradually becomes more like human. 150 years into it? Well, at this point, it's only like 60 years or something. Okay, then, yeah, that makes sense. But then he, 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 it's some Pinocchio shit. He just wants to become a human so he can, so he can marry the, the granddaughter. Uh, but also, the, at, at the midway point of the movie, they introduce a female robot. Who I who is the most annoying character I've ever seen in any film ever, and I'm like, holy shit, they're not really setting him up with this annoying girl robot because that's going to be insufferable. So my my memory of this, let me just interject. I watched this it's on a more train than I to talk about, um, and I didn't pay that much attention. It was like the the scenic car of a train that I watched. I paid this money on. to watch this movie. Um, my memory is that he marries the girl robot and they have robot kids. <laughs> and then they, and my then, and then when he hits 200, they memory. unplug him and he dies. My memory is that they do not have children. They don't have they kids. My, on account my of memory is that they're like, impossible. they're like lying in, in, on their deathbed in the middle yes. of a con- council chamber. And he's declared human and then dies instantly afterwards. That's yes. Okay. That is correct. Oh, okay. They're not in That's the very council stupid. chamber. They are zooming with the, like the UN or something. I remember so because this movie lasted 200 years. Yeah. God. I watched it over like five <laughs> sessions. I think it's nearly three hours long or some shit. It is. It's like it's super long. <laughs> anyway, it's bad. Don't see it. I, I watch I AI remember, and artificial intelligence oh, instead. That does have Haley Joel Osment. A, I fucking love AI. I can still remember his uh, super dance from the fucking trailer. Also starring Robin Williams, strangely. A, he's in uh, AI? 
he is the voice of the Albert Einstein AI guy, like the 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 VTuber. Albert the VTuber Einstein. Albert Einstein. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically what it was. AI invented Stanley Kubrick. Kubrick invented a uh, VTubing. Oh, I forgot that was Kubrick. Weird. Never I saw don't know how much of it was. the script. I don't think he actually directed it. Oh. No, it's just Spielberg directed. Oh, okay. I don't know like how it, the whole thing was it was Kubrick's last project, but he died before he could get very far on it. But I don't know how how much he actually Rest in peace. How Kubrick. much of that was actually his. Stanley Kubrick, he made some good movies and some bad movies. The good include the shining. The good did not include the shining. The good the good include uh 2001. I don't like that one. And I remember, I remember liking The Clockwork Orange in high school, but I feel like that's one. I don't like I that one again, either. I probably wouldn't like it. I don't know when we're going to do my top 10 list, but I have a top five movies that Sarah liked in high school and probably wouldn't anymore. The, would you like to do you? Do you want to do that now uh, instead of Nimona? No. Okay. Do you okay. have your top 10 list ready? Pretty much. It's a top 19 plus the five. Top 19 okay, well, you'll have, plus You'll have to do five. 10 of them. Plus but... my bottom five. No, I'm not going to hijack the episode to do that right now. <laughs> well, no. I, I have a sneaking suspicion we might go short today. So I don't, I don't think so. Maybe we can stick that at the end if okay. we've got time. If we have to fill the I'm, time. I'm eager to hear. Okay. I think I should get a whole episode dedicated to my just me. This is it personally. St- just anyway, an about moving on. <laughs> Nimona. Now. Never heard of this in my life, but sorry. I just wanted to, to speak talk about, about this very briefly because I did see it. I don't. I don't watch it with very many movies of my own volition. And this is a movie of a web comic. This is based on a web comic that I've never read uh, by Andy Stevenson. Uh I, did, I, I had to watch it. I, I, I have not published a webcomic in 22 years, but it was like, it's like, a, we, we finally made it though. So I feel kind of, uh, there's a pride. One of us finally made it. This is actually the second webcomic movie, but the first one was Marry Me, which doesn't count. Uh, when, are they, when are they going to make a movie of Crustaceans Landing? I don't know. I haven't. I stopped reading that like a year ago. It was. I don't. I couldn't follow it anymore. When are they anyway, going to make a movie of Furthia High? <laughs> I mean, was this a, a web comic person you knew, Cyraptor? No, I don't know them. Um, oh, okay. Furthia High, I, and I never is read. by Markiplier's brother. Okay, I remember. Was that fucking? There's some furry web comic. I think that's unless like I'm concession? the longest running. I think it was oh, uh, shit! I don't remember. There's also Kevin and Kel, but that's not the one I'm thinking of. Anyway, um, I enjoy this movie. Uh, I the the main character, the title character comes very close to being completely unbearably annoying. Well, Cyraptor, what's this movie about? I don't want to... Do, do I have to... It's about... Um, I know nothing about Elevator it, pitch. So I'll, 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 yeah. Uh, basically, it's about these two knights who are... are, are these two, like... Uh, knight, they're not knighted yet. That's the, the, the beginning of the movie is they're... These two knights, they're lovers. They're gay lovers, by the way. This is a very LGBT friendly film. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, as the one in the poster, I can't remember his name. Uh, the one on the bottom, Tom Savini. It's not Tom Savini. It's uh, it's Bodie Rook from Rogue One, Riz Ahmed. Uh, and the other knight is voiced by one of the Try Guys. Not the one that got <laughs> <quite cold. laughs> Anyway, as they're about to get knighted by the like queen, it's the queen. Uh, 
and this this guy is considered an, like an outcast sort of like he's like an outsider but he so people a lot of people don't like him i don't remember uh <laughs> so he's, get, he's about to get knighted in his he's got like his sword his hand on his sword and the hilt of the sword opens up and shoots a laser out and kills the queen he doesn't know anything about this he's been set up the queen is dead now everyone wants this guy dead so he has to go into hiding. And Nimona, who is this little little girl who's also a shapeshifter, she can turn into any, well, any, I was going to say any animal, but I think she could turn into anything at all, uh, wants to be his uh, minion, his sidekick. And uh, that's basically, the movie's basically him trying to clear his name and, and she's helping him, but she also... Uh, is a little little demon like imp and she likes to cause she just wants to cause trouble she's mischievous she's mischievous she just wants to be evil he wants to like clear he wants to be a hero he wants to be, clear his name uh and like he the, his the other night guy that's his lover uh feels like betrayed cuz he, he he doesn't know it was this he, the guy, the other guy who said it. I wish I could remember their names. Is this a uh, kids movie I, or for I adults? I have the names here. It's, it's Barrister? The main one is Ballister Boldheart. Ballister. And then the other one is Ambrosius Golden Lion. Okay, yeah, the Try Guy is Golden Loin. Yeah. So it's basically just him trying to clear his name and get get. Who is the target the audience, Cyraptor? It, it's for... Trans, kind of, trans like preteens, a, probably. It's like an all ages thing. It's uh, okay, you know, PG. Probably a little too violent for G. Right. Uh, it arguably has trans themes in it. I mean, sort of, sort of like not, no, not overtly, but like uh, metaphorically, I guess. And the author is trans, so yeah. Good movie. Um, but I, oh, but I was going to say the, the main character could have been very, very annoying, but I thought uh, she's voiced by Hit Girl. Chloe Grace I, thought, I thought all the voices were really well done. And I thought the, the animation and the art style was beautiful, uh, sort of stylized. I'm not like a huge fan of, of 3D animation generally, uh, but I thought the really good movie. I really like the movie. That's why I wanted to talk about it. It's on Netflix. It's how many sessions long. did it take you to watch it? I watched this in one sitting. Okay, that's a good rating think, from you. I think I may have taken a break in the middle, but I just before before we found this higher res of the poster, I thought I thought the smaller res said a little ant, a little hero, and I was like, hmm, all right, <laughs> she looks like a demon to me, but I guess she's an ant. I don't think but she turns into an ant. It, it says a little ant. She ante, turns into. So. so, Madam Morris, um, never heard of Ant Man? She turns into a whale. I've heard of Ant Man. I need to. I need to issue a correction for something I said earlier. Okay. I said Mark Plyer did Furthy a High. That's wrong. Mark Plyer did two kinds. Mark which might be brother, the, you mean? Mark Plyer's brother did two kinds, which might be the. The very long-running furry comics Cyraptor was thinking of because it's been going for nineteen no, years. No, it's that's not the one. <laughs> anyway, folks, check Looking out Pneumonia on uh, <laughs> Netflix. <laughs> yeah, if you want. Where's Prehysteria? There it is. So main movie, main movie number one of the week, Full Moon's, not Full Moon, Moonbeam, Moonbeam Entertainment's Prehysteria. Uh, this poster, these dinosaurs don't look like that at all. They look a little bit like that. kind of do, yeah. They look a little friendlier on the poster. What's going on with Casbo's thumb <laughs> on the poster? It's like leaning out weird so i, stepped on it. I don't know i uh i don't know 
<clears throat> so this is uh, this is by Charles Band and, and Full Moon, but it's it's the Moonbeam imprint, which is uh, on the Video Zone, which is on YouTube. It's not on Tubi. You can still find the Video Zone. Charles explains it's for uh, fantasy films that don't have that hard edge, Chil- family friendly films that remind you of Jason and the Argonauts and Never Ending Story. Uh, <laughs> what are you laughing at? It's Jason and the Argonauts is such a weirdly specific. Just they mentioned it in the article too. Really? I, yeah, like specifically Jason and the Argonauts. Don't know why. I think that's well, the one that has nude harpies in it. But I mean, it's, that's, it's uh, been a long time since I've seen it. Isn't Jason and the Argonauts like the go-to? Harryhausen stop motion. It's got the big skeleton fight at the end, and I think it does the have thing, the nude harpies. Which one's? It's the, the thing everybody compared stop motion to for like thirty years. Which one's the one with the cyclops? Is it that? Uh it might also be that. I thought Odysseus fought the cyclops. Am I crazy? I don't know Greek history very well. Greek Hold history. <laughs> Seventh voyage of Sinbad is the cyclops. Oh, okay. It's real to me. Damn it. Yeah, it's basically history for mythology. Yeah, history to others, it's history. Or <laughs> to oh, fuck it. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, this movie starts out very similar to uh, oh, what did we watch last week? It started just like this. Puppet Master, uh, The Littlest no. Reich. No, Dr. that was. Death. Three weeks ago, played. Well, played okay. Played My note says Cross. Munchy vibes. Uh, oh. It's it's scrolling <laughs> over, vibes. scrolling over Aztec, you know, hieroglyphics, various generic stuff, and then finally it ends on some dinosaurs interacting the, with the Aztec hieroglyphics. Uh, the T Rex movie we couldn't watch last night started the exact same way. It did. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Jomon, Jomon shit. period. Which will bring you Stop. back for Cyraptor, don't worry. Did you say you Rex found that? Rex Kyoryu okay. I do, Guitar. I have actually I have it downloaded, so we'll do it. Okay. Sean, can you say the name of that for us? Uh, Rex uh, Kyoryu Monogatari. No, 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 no. Yeah. No, Count needs to say it. Where does just set it for me? I don't want to shame no, anyone for not it. being able to pronounce Japanese. Yeah. It's not shaming, it's practice. I'm an American. I don't want to practice Japanese. Speak American in New Jersey. Rex Kyo Ryu Monogatari. Excuse me. Rekusu. Let's say it's Rex. That was good. You're going to tell me I'm wrong? No, that was good. Mono Atari. Atari Fanboy Summer. But what we're talking Some about is prehysteria. Uh, <laughs> Are we? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so this movie opens with uh, sort of a... What's that guy from Beetlejuice? Otho? I, he made me think of Otho from Beetlejuice. Like a, a little toady asshole going on an expedition in Charles Band's backyard sort of made an up obsequious obsequious toad henchman <laughs> an obsequious toad yes. villain main yes. villain Sinertia once said yeah friend of the stream um well, from like the Ooh. cartoon hmm? what? from the movie yeah also from the movie you know the uh the art guy oh yeah 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 um no he was in he was in uh also, we're dangerously Rex close Slayer. to saying it three times, so please don't. <laughs> I've never seen the movie. So he's he's being led around. It's it's very Raiders. It's it's a ripoff of Raiders. Which movie? Prehistoria. No, Slushy, which oh. movie haven't you seen? Beetlejuice. Oh! I haven't seen Beetlejuice. No! <laughs> Somebody Michael Keaton's knocking to my door. He's here. I thought that was the mask. Beetle just did it first. Um, oh, okay. 
They're uh, they're nice fucking model. <laughs> So you, you have seen it. What the hell? No, there's a YouTuber I used to watch who uses that anytime something looks bad in a video game. Oh, weird. So Okay, so this guy, he's he's hunting artifacts. He's unhappy with artifacts. He's got, uh, there's, a, there's a lead Indian guy leading the pack. And he's like, well, we could go to this sacred place. And everybody, everybody's like, no, we got to leave. And he says, well, I'm sorry I brought up the sacred place. You're not, you can't go there, and I'm not going to go there. So, Did you mention this is in South America? I think I started to, and somebody interrupted me. I probably interrupted you. Sorry. <laughs> this well, you said Charles in- Band's backyard. Yeah. It's, yeah. So, Which is in South America. Do they say where? They didn't give a country, right? It's just I don't South think America. they. Yeah, I don't think they. I assumed a it was country. somewhere in Mexico, but I don't know. Did they specify South America? I guess it would probably be I, like I North South, South America. America. <laughs> if Aztecs are involved, I don't know. So he sneaks off on his own in the in the rubbery backyard jungle. And he finds a very small cave. <laughs> uh, he falls in it just like in a uh, dragon slayer. Yeah, like just the same way. They fell the same way. That's all. You're talking about Dragon Slayer the movie. Yeah, I don't remember. Like in Dragon like he Slayer falls the into movie, the he, dragon. Does he, he fall into, into the dragon it? cave? It's the the cave yeah. is like. It's like an entryway, and then it turns, and then it terminates. <laughs> like, was there a fall in this? I don't remember. In prehistoria, yeah. Okay. He like he fell, and he was like, "Oh, you don't sneak up on me like that," because he saw a skeleton or something. What's weird about this right. is he's kind of being portrayed as a protagonist hero, schlubby Indiana Jones, which is weird. I when I later, think it's pretty clear I, yeah, from his use of. At all. I think well, it's pretty clear from his use of some dated terminology that he's not a good guy. What's the dated terminology? Well, you I don't want to say it. You can't say it. Oh, Did he right. say slurs or something? Sort of. I don't. I don't semi. know if it's considered a slur. It is. It's the one for native people that is similar to the thing that runs in a car. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Any. I don't know. Indiana Jones was racy. He was racy. He wasn't racist. We don't know. Anyway. So, it looks like a set from... Indiana Jones has a lot of respect for other cultures to be racist, I think. I just thought it would be nice and diverse to have a big fat guy be Indiana Jones. I don't know. I mean, it would, but that'd be a better John Candy movie than this. Oh, that would be cool. Yeah. That would be great. You get some, like... I don't know, schlubby guy. He died too soon. He what if he yeah, had been? Yeah, unfortunately, in a... all fat white comedians die. It's a rough life early in their life. Yeah, I don't. I don't have much longer. What do you mean? You're doing As great. A fat white comedian. <laughs> well, that's why we're the so. The thing is, Cyraptor. At least as far as we know, you don't abuse drugs and alcohol to the extent of. Did John Candy? At least Chris Farley. Well, Chris Chris Farley Farley definitely did. I don't. I don't know about John Candy. I think just traveling on the road too really gets to people when you're uh, a heavy guy. Yeah. And you thought this episode was going to run short. I mean, you know, I'm not grinding on Street Fighter right now, so I'm I'm more engaged and I'm interrupting constantly. (laughs) I'm I'm here for it. Wasn't a criticism. We can always get Paul Blart to do it. Yeah, he's doing fine. He only yeah, we, we can... Adam Sandler movies, though. Yeah, bring him in as like an adventurer. I'm kind of surprised they haven't done that yet. I, I, I'm just saying there's potential there. Schlubby adventurer, Indiana Jones type. Yeah. Is Which it... is not this movie. This is pre-hysteria, and he's like just a piece of shit. <laughs> Has it ever been done? I can't think of like a schlubby adventurer. Yeah, I don't think so. I really don't think it has. Huh. How much adventuring did they do? Mario. In Hills Maybe Adventure? after we do Puppet Master Seventeen, we can do Prehistoria Four. 
<laughs> we'll bring him back. We'll bring this guy back. I, that would require a reboot. Right. Well, that's fine. I would reboot Prehysteria. That's fine. And do a much better job. I'm sure Prehysteria 3 and hard. maybe even 2 also reboot Prehysteria to some extent. MDC Chris in the chat says, newer Jumanji movies had Jack Black. That is true. But that was more but like he, an ensemble piece than like yeah, him as a lead. He's like a, a side character and also the person that was embodying him was like a teenage girl or something, right? I also think he's what? played for laughs, right? He's not like the hero. So we need like a schlubby hero. The, now we have to the new Jumanji, Jumanji movies. <laughs> the new Jumanji <laughs> movies. The party gets sucked into like an Atari 2600 game. And Pitfall. that is Jumanji is the, the game. So it's, like it's not board game. a teenage girl gets sucked into Jack Black, the character in the game. Yeah, they get sucked through the Atari to South America. Well, the Atari wouldn't have the fidelity to render Jack Black, so... Oh. <laughs> I don't do you think Pitfall it's Harry... It's Mortis. Do you think through okay. the eyes of Pitfall Harry, he sees a bunch of a bunch of solid color blocks? Well, he, yes, because the at the end of Pitfall... Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. At the end of Pitfall, the Mayan, Mayan Adventure... Adventure. Uh, you rescue Pitfall Harry and he's just the Atari sprite. So like, yes, I do think that is what do he you sees. think? Do you think Buster Keaton saw in black and white? <laughs> well, according uh, to the Flash movie, there's the entire world is in black and white. Yeah. The George Reeves Superman is black and white. Yeah. And uh, Adam West Batman's missing his ears. They couldn't even render them. <laughs> what? Go back and look. In what? Oh, in the flash In the flash. Who was George Reeves? He was like Superman. The 40s. That killed himself because he was tired of being Superman. And then they put him in a uh, Flash movie 70 years later. Is he related to Christopher Reeves? No. I think it's, it's Reeve. It's just Reeve and Reeves. Oh. Just I think it's interesting that I care so little about the character, the Flash. Every time somebody says Flash movie, I think they're talking about Shockwave Flash. <laughs> I love the Flash as a character, but I like Wally West, not so much Barry Allen. I think the anti-Flash is way cooler. Can we please talk he, about prehistoric? Like so, reverse Flash. Thank you, Sir After, um, I'll tell you later, Count. The guy, the guy enters the tomb and uh, sees sees on the ceiling a corpse <laughs> impaled on the ceiling. <laughs> Ernest P. Worrell hanging from the ceiling. It's pretty grisly for a children's movie. Straight out of it is, from the deep. It is just... <laughs> I was about to make that joke, Cyraptor. <laughs> it is just on screen for like two seconds or something, but it's just like, it's a dead corpse. He's He somehow got sucked onto the ceiling and impaled on like spikes. Recently dead corpse. Yeah, not, not extremely long so this, dead. This guy should have been dressed as an Although, Andrew and that been funny. It was like a meme. That would have been there. funny. So he may have been preserved. That's true. So he does. What's this? Sardo? Sarno? It's Sarno, Sarno. right? I, I, it kept making me think of the character from uh, Are You Afraid of the Sardo. Dark or whatever. Sar Sardo. You remember that? Sardo. Accent on the dough. Yeah. Which is Tim Curry, right? No. <laughs> no? Just, nope. Just some guy. Oh, okay. Weird. Um, some uh, Rob Schneider looking I, guy. I think it was Tim Curry. Um, so, Tim okay. Curry Sarno, the, the schlubby guy, he walks into this secret, sacred zone, takes two steps to the right, and then uh, suddenly it's ice. Everything is icy, and he has found the dinosaur eggs. And he's like, yeah, these eggs are smaller than I thought. Like, which they never established what the sacred he treasure know what was. He doesn't dinosaur eggs yet. Yeah. So there's no reason for him to think <laughs> have any the preconception. Eggs, the eggs are too small. If anything, they're uh, enormous by the standard of any egg a normal human would encounter in day to day life. I think he was just surprised that the sacred place was for this. Right. They're about the size of ostrich eggs. Yeah. When was the last time you saw an ostrich egg? In person, never. Yeah, see him on there TV. You, you can't tell how big an ostrich egg is on TV. Fire <laughs> after. Anyway, back to prehysteria. 
bless you for being here. So, so the, the Indian guy catches up with him and puts his knife to his throat. He's like, you can't steal these. These are, these are my culture's thing. The, the gods gave these to my people and said, as long as we keep them frozen, we'll be safe. And he's like, no. <laughs> he hits him over the head with an egg and steals all the eggs. Uh, setting up the film. So he, he puts him in a, a cooler, just a little, like, you know, lunch cooler for fishing. And I guess it goes it's back to America. Cooler, at least. There's no ice in it. Right, yeah, there's no ice in it. Um, <laughs> but the eggs are all kind of, like, iced over. I guess they'd have their own residual cold. So we get introduced to the family. Uh, my next note is, Dad doing archaeology in his backyard question mark um there's there's a kid listening to elvis and jumping on his bed i guess it's not even elvis right like none of the elvis no, in this movie is a real elvis song so right. it's just an elvis sound alike yeah it's not really elvis it's not even like an elvis song covered it's just a song that sounds it's like it's not even it's not even elvis it's like rockabilly it's not right. even <laughs> elvis, well really. the tradition uh, so this is, is this the kid from last action hero? Yes. Which filmed the same year? Yes. I, I don't know which filmed first, but it released the same year. Yeah. His acting in this was, uh, really bad. I thought I, I found him extremely annoying and like fidgety, which. But weirdly, he's only like the third or f- fifth most annoying character in the movie. <laughs> Right. I thought of two more midway through that sentence. I think it was in a character in a movie with five characters. Was was it Cyraptor who said he was acting like Elvis? Oh yeah, like right. you can tell it. He was scripted to be like a huge Elvis fan and like constantly be imitating Elvis and like making Elvis references, but he's. He's so bad at doing that that or or is not just not even trying to do that or no one directed him to do that that I didn't even pick up on it until like two thirds of the way through the movie where he referenced an Elvis movie that I had to look up because we didn't know what that (laughs) GI blues. You look like you got a case of GI blues, but like he's always doing blame the kid. He's always doing shit with his eyes, like which he's not dressed like Elvis. Is he just, is he trying to do like an Elvis thing with his face? Cause he's always kind of like fidgeting his eyes and like moving his cheeks weird. I blame the bands. This kid probably didn't even know who Elvis was. Yeah, probably. I mean, yeah. I knew who Elvis was in 1993 and I'm like years younger than this. I mean, he probably knows the name, but he probably wasn't an Elvis fan. Well, no, that's, (laughs) I'm sure he wasn't an actual Elvis fan. However, he is an actor. I know, but like a kid's not going to Okay. I don't know. It was it was probably just bad directing. That's all. I like, think that's probably like directing. Uh, he did pretty good in Last Action Hero and he did pretty bad in Prehysteria and there's Have we looked up you know? which like acting credit this is for this kid? That's about it. Okay. Well then, Austin, yeah, I don't know. I blame Austin the director. O'Brien I don't blame the kid. Yeah, there there were two units and two different c- directors we found out on the video zone because they didn't want the actors sitting around. They wanted them constantly right. acting. I feel like if you wanted so, to do uh, someone obsessed with Elvis and like a younger person, make it like the the older teen, you know, someone who's like fourteen or fifteen, and, uh, and then you could probably get the the actual acting out of them. Not right. like this kid, right? Then yeah, he's, then also, you sorry, would... he's also the male lead in My Girl too, starring Dan Aykroyd. Wait. He's also in why a show a called. Girl. Does Dan Aykroyd just have another son? Oh, the girl what? is Dan Aykroyd's daughter, right? I don't. Oh, is he in the? Fr- I never saw the first one. Yeah, he's. Yeah, I figured My Girl too was like some fucking direct a video sequel where I think it is, but like Dan Aykroyd is it. <laughs> he's the he's the father of the girl. Like <clears throat> he was the he was also on an episode director. Of, he was also on an episode of Bones. Dan Aykroyd was or the kid. No, the the kid. Okay. 
And Bones is recent, so he would have been an adult. Right? He would have been an adult. I don't know. Yeah, if I'd Bones, say Bones is, is recent. Okay. Bones is fairly recent. 20 years old, but. It's more recent than prehysteria. So, okay, yes. we're introduced to this this quirky family, and the dad is like, he seems to be doing archaeology, paleontology in his backyard, which that never comes back again, right? Like, we we meet this no. dad, and he's like doing, I, he's digging <laughs> up fossils, and then he's never digging up fossils again, and he never really cares about fossils again. I think it was like a side hustle because they were struggling for money, so he right. was... Digging, digging up some uh, fossils. People so the, just not eating raisins as much as they this, used to. This family has a fucking grape farm, grape and maybe raisin strawberries farm. farm. Well, Wars, please, it's a raisin farm. Yeah, but they grow they they grow the grapes, and then they turn. No, the they grapes just leave them raisins. on there. No, no, they leave the grapes on, and they don't harvest them until they turn into raisins. Well, there's there is a point. This seventy is minutes. Thing we don't we don't find out until. Yeah, At least halfway there's the point. 70, <laughs> 72 minutes into the film, he says, we've got grapes to pick. Okay. So, like, they right. pick the grapes. Well, I'm, the one who, I'm the one who said, is a, is a raisin farm just a grape farm? And everyone was like, uh, no, they're completely different things. So, but like, well, not everyone. I just said that it, it's, it's probably different grapes like different quality grapes. You're not going to you're not going to grow vine or uh, wine level grapes on a raisin farm. So be expensive. So jumping ahead a little bit. Um, are th- are these plants even grape plants that we see in this film? Because they're like bushes that come up to maybe your knees. Like, aren't grapes on vines? I, I don't. I don't know, and the, most of the audience won't know, so they, right. they can get away with it. I think they just filmed on whatever farm would let them. And so, then. I filmed it in Sonoma had Valley. A bag of raisins for some right. reason. I'm looking at a raisin farm, and it, it does appear to be uh, at least similar in size and shape to the plants that are depicted in the film. So the dad's doing paleontology. Seems to be. But hold on, we don't learn that it's a raisin farm until halfway what? through the movie. Well, where yes. the, the fucking basement is covered. <laughs> the basement floor is covered in raisins. And they never establish why. Well, at this point, we don't know like, what the, is happening with this right, house it, and family. So it's like, are those raisins all over the floor? Because it looks like, like I don't know, dog food or like just dirt clods or something. I thought Rex was just shitting all over the yeah, place. Yeah, I thought it may or, have yeah, been like, tiny like dinosaur poop at one point. Like that. Anyway. So it turns out the father is digging up with stroll lights or so, like what did they call it? I don't know. He's That's digging up fossils. I don't remember if they said it, but he's digging he up fossils digging up to sell to the local museum. Uh, which, local by the museum, way, which is like an <laughs> antique store, right? Question mark. Yeah, doesn't look it, at all like a museum. It's a museum it a where you can shop. buy all the stuff. In the article I read, they call it a gift shop. Oh, okay. And like the only reason that plot element even exists is. To connect him, like, <laughs> right? Because it's dropped immediately. It's to connect him to the 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 John Candy guy, right? Yeah, we, who yeah, owns the egg, museum? We have to get the eggs from the schlubby guy to the kids somehow, and so right, like introduce a babe as well. Three step thing. So the babe could have been anybody. She could have been. I, I wanted. I want to note my note downer kid. Um. While while they're while the dad is like <laughs> dusting off all his little fossils, the kid is like, "Dad, <laughs> do you miss mom?" <laughs> so they just really solidly established that the mother's dead and gone, and like a couple different ways, the the kid just, "Dad, do you think mom would want our dog to be pregnant?" <laughs> just shit like that. And I don't know about you guys, but I was really confused because. I like there's no transition between talking about the mom and talking about the dog. So I thought he like, <laughs> imp- like, I didn't know who was getting impregnated. I didn't know who died. <laughs> that happens a few the, times. I thought the, the dad impregnated the dog and that's why the dog died. Remember at the end, they're like, Oh, this dog is like a mother to them. And everyone but me felt that they were talking about the dog <laughs> as a mother to the family. So I, 
I think they were the point of this scene was they were trying to establish a that the mother was dead, yeah, and b that the dog, the dog had puppies and they gave the puppies away. Right. So then the dog so the would dog, want the right. dinosaurs as the puppies. Exactly. So I think they were trying to convey those two points, but they got very confused in the in the the conveying of them. It's actually a very clever, tight script writing. <laughs> So I think the script is better than the direction. I think is the issue here. The um, although I'll, I'll talk about the script later. Okay, <laughs> we in, in the behind the scenes segment I've prepared. There's I also a sister. Near, there is a sister. Um, and she loves pop music. She loves pop music, and the 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 little brother I'm, says she looks I'm like Polly Madonna Shore. in Heat, which is in Heat. Number, Number one, one of what three? Yeah, yes. Like three times, three times in this film are, are things in heat. Uh, at least once, something is horny. Did they say horny? That like is horny twice or something. I think they say horny twice. They say it again. I remember one. They say dad is horny. Leave I'm sorry. Alone. I closed the windows and someone is doing yard work. I don't know if that's it was still audible. It wasn't audible. Uh. So <laughs> the so they they go to this gift shop and they're trying to sell these little fossil things to a, a lady Azurite. Thank you. Yes, uh, a lady who looks me. like Denise Richards, a nineties a nineties eyebrow hot lady who just immediately has sexual chemistry with the dad, <laughs> and they're like. They're trying to kiss in the oh. in the museum. What's that? Wait, so yeah, did they know each other beforehand, or was that they did? Well, it's that was not the that first time they met. Okay, yeah, because yeah. that was another. And the dad brought the azurite in a cooler that cost him fifty dollars. No, that they reason. just had that. That was their lunch. Oh, the azurite okay. was just that makes in a, a lot separate more sense. Thing. Yeah, they had their they they had a turkey bone. In the in the cooler, which I guess they ate and then put the bone back. <laughs> I don't know. Right. There was there was no garbage cans and they didn't want to just throw it in the street. Right. You know? So she wants to give the dad a, a good deal on his Azurite because they're in love. And uh the uh Sarno shows up with with his cooler of dinosaur eggs <laughs> and he's like no don't give him any give him the usual deal which is we can assume is a very bad deal and there's a little mix up little switcheroo the dog brings Sarno's cooler instead of the correct cooler and they steal the dinosaur eggs accidentally well was it an accident or is the dog yeah that's a good point lonely Did the, could the dog sense the dog may have known because the dog the dog's name is Meredith, by the way, it is. It's I thought it was like, like Ruby. Oh yeah, it is. It's Ruby. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Meredith. I don't know the names of any of the name. characters who aren't Sarno. I know Ruby and Sarno. I have a note here that says, "I don't want to get prehysterical." I don't remember who said that. Was that oh, Sarno? That was Sarno. Yes, that was the the best like name drop of. <laughs> Right. And film because it's not <laughs> like it's it's so close to the name, but it's not like presumably prehistoric is prehistoric and hysteric, like hysteria, like funny haha. Mm -hmm. But this is pre hyphen hysterical, meaning before you get hysterical, like crazy. He's like talking to which is uh, sexist, by the way. He's like talking to a buyer from a proper museum. He's trying to sell phone. his eggs, yeah. Yeah, and he's don't, like, I don't want to get prehysterical here. But this is worth a lot of money. So I... <laughs> I have a note. I was hoping for one scene of the Indian tribe being destroyed. Like, just meteors falling and, like, the, the guy who held the knife to Sarno's throat, like, ah, screaming in the foreground. But we never do get that, sadly. Was it stated like, tr like 
an apocalypse would be fallen if the dinosaurs. I mean, he said he well, said was, they would be protected just... as long as the as long as the eggs were in their place. Okay. Yeah. I just hoped it would like cut back real quick and then back to the stupid Midwestern. We never find out where this is, by the way. Like it must be. It's got to be California. Yeah. One because every full moon movie takes place in California. Well, mostly. it's probably literally in California. Yeah. Wait, no, they right. say it's and, on and two. They say it's on location. What did they say? It's like hand Hansford or something. <laughs> In the video zone, they said this is, it's actually shot on location. Hanford. Hanford. Where's Hanford? Is that in California? Uh, I mean, who knows where it's supposed to take place, but. Hanford is a city in California. Central Valley. So the, the eggs come back. The dog unpacks the eggs. Puts them, puts the eggs on her dog bed and they immediately hatch <laughs> they grow and hatch and just just the cutest little dinosaurs uh by special effects by david allen from puppet master fame uh there's what are there there's five of there's these five. Little, little fellas yeah uh, there's a uh... I didn't I didn't pull screen caps of all of them, but there's a T Rex na- who becomes named Elvis because he's the king, king of the dinosaurs. Mm-hmm. He's the he's the hero of the film, the best looking. There's a, a little pterodactyl named Madonna. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. She's a technically Geosternbergia. <laughs> I can't all right. It's a Geosternbergia, it's it. not a Madonna. I mean it's not a pterodactyl. Yeah. It's a type of pterosaur. It's it, that would have been classified as a pteranodon at the time. Interesting, but because of the shape of the crest, that is, it has now been reclassified as a different species named Geosternbergia. Now, did they? Where I don't know where you sourced that from, Slushy, but I'm wondering if they got the, corrected the, the Brachiosaurus f- species. Uh, no, it says female Brachiosaurus okay. named Jagger, or no, it's named Paula. Sorry, <laughs> okay, Paula Abdul. This, it's technically a giraffe a titan. Giraffe a titan. Giraffe a titan, which is again used to be classified as a brachiosaurus. That is the so African brachiosaurus ugly. species. <laughs> <laughs> What's well, the stegosaurus? We're, we're looking name? at the Jagger. Okay. Jagger is a stegosaurus. Okay. Yeah, the stegosaurus is like the le- it's the worst looking one and it is in the film the least. It never it doesn't like have its own scene. And they- doesn't even get on the poster. It doesn't get it's on, the on the any of the posters for any of these movies. They possibly never say its name in the film. They're like maybe, ashamed of it, but they kept it in the movie. Uh, and then the 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 brontosaurus and the what is it? Chasmosaurus. Chasmosaurus. Not yes. Tri- Strange they didn't go with Triceratops. But I'm 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 pleasantly. Well, they knew that Surprise. you'd be watching thirty years later. Pictured so. in the video version is the the. Well, they call it a chasmosaurus chaos. They or... see the word chasmosaurus more than the fucking name of the stegosaurus. Yeah, I mean, at one point they call it. Somebody just casually calls it the chasmo, and I was like, "What? Yeah. What? What the fuck is a chasmo?" Because yeah. I I just looked like a triceratops to me. I don't know. Did we say it, the name of the chasmo yet? Hammer. So. Hammer. Now is that MC Hammer? It would have to be, yes. right? It's, I mean I would I would imagine. It's not Jan Hammer, I assume. <laughs> Who is Jan Hammer? Is that a Star Wars he thing? Did the, no, it's a he didn't he do the From the Pure Moods, the yeah. uh Vice. Miami he Vice, did, uh, right? I don't know what this is. He did Crockett theme for Miami Vice. Yeah. Slushy and I are a little too young to understand this reference. I wasn't born yet when Miami Vice. You was never on. saw the I Pure Moods commercial where it has. They might, they might be too young for Pure Moods. Oh, so you know that commercial, but not Pepsi Girl. I looked up Pepsi Girl. Zero yeah. recollection. I I don't remember Pepsi Girl at all. I have never been a Pepsi person. She was a cultural phenomenon. 
for like a know. year, maybe. I don't. I don't remember Pepsi. Pure, pure mood, the Pure Moods commercial I heard for years. Yeah, it's probably still on. Yeah, they're what, pure what, moods. what is Pure Eight, Moods? Yeah. It's a. It's one of those compilation CDs of just. It has. It has the a, DJ Dotto H-H-H-H-H. remix of the X Files theme. <laughs> uh, it has. Uh, yeah, it's like new age easy listening world. It has music some enigma. It has some Enya, two enigma songs on it. I think. Well, it's got some Brian it's, Eno on it. All right. What? No, it doesn't. I Not like the first Brian one. Eno. I'm I'm looking at it right now. Volume the first one has Brian Eno it. on it. Hmm. That might be Pure Moods version. One, Song Twenty, Another Green World, that's, Brian that's, Eno, One Minute Thirty One Seconds. That's the original seconds. European version. That's not the version that was advertised. On that's television. a great song. So we're talking about the the Pure Moods 1997 re-release. Yes. Okay. They removed the that Brian one. Does Eno not have Brian Eno. You're to right. Put on another uh, Enigma song or something. Yeah, there's two Enigma songs on here. So the kid, little kid, <laughs> it's gonna be a short episode. He folks. finds the dinosaurs. He names some of them. Uh, typical family movie. Oh, the dinosaur. Um, this is when we started to become confused about the raisins because the dinosaurs are constantly sitting in just a pile of raisins. There is a scene where the dad, the dad picks up his white day laborers to do farming and like some of them are wearing sun made t-shirts and, and then it cuts back to the kids or the dinosaurs sitting in the raisins and you start to notice a pattern. Uh, there's the thing is, they never like knock a box of raisins over or anything. They're just right. raisins, raisins strewn all over the floor. There, yeah, there's no scene where like, they like gnaw into the raisin course, bag or something. That is just, what we call organic storytelling through the environment. <laughs> the raisins yeah, are just but I mean, there. Just keeping the raisins loose in his basement. I don't want to eat those raisins. Well, I mean, they were raisins they were raisins. originally in cloth sacks. Were they? Did, like, they see, did the dinosaurs get into them? They didn't show did it. No, there's no did. scene of them. I don't think. I don't there think is, it's in there. There is. There is one shot with an overturned cloth sack of rain. Okay. All right. The only thing I remember the dinosaurs getting into was uh, chips for dips. Well, right. Elvis, right. which Rex was in because he, or yeah, Elvis was <laughs> in because he loves meat and potatoes. When Elvis, uh, <laughs> Although they were like the kid, yeah, the kid and Elvis bond because they're both carnivores. His um, name King. Is it Elvis? El- what the fuck? <laughs> His name is Elvis? Yes. I mean, he, Did you watch the movie? A, what, 100 times in the movie and 100 times so far in this podcast. He does keep <laughs> calling him He does call him king several times, but Elvis is the king. Yes, they're both the, the, the it's, it's Elvis is the one. king of rock and roll and Tyrannosaurus is the king of the and This is when America. when he dis- when he discovers the dinosaurs, he's like T-Rex, king of dinosaurs. Elvis, the king, and then when he show when the di- dad is learning about the dinosaurs, he's like, he's Elvis because he's the king, <laughs> right? And then also he says Elvis a billion times in the movie towards the dinosaur. But then also, so what's his name? <laughs> Elvis Rex. Okay, thank you. Also on the raisin thing in the scene where Elvis is rampaging in the kitchen, he gets into, or no, this is before that. He's just walking around in the kitchen. He gets into a bag of like it looks like in the kitchen. A, it looks like a coffee bag, or I don't know, but it's it has a sun made logo on it. I assume it's like it's raisin like, cookies it's or raisins. something. It's a I've never seen oh, raisins yeah, in a bag like that, but just more raisins. Like not only do they grow raisins, they go to the store and buy raisins. I guess. <laughs> I, I wonder if they got like a sponsorship from Sunmade because in Prehistoria 2, there's a lot of Sunmade logos also. That's funny. I watched the first <laughs> half of Prehistoria 2, everyone. Only me. Why would you? Just because to I see. wanted to we see, gotta see. I wanted to see if it followed up on the the stinger ending of the first one. You which know I, it doesn't. I won't spoil yet. I had to know. So Sarno's freaking out at this point 
he knows the eggs are gone. He knows more or less where the eggs are. He's blaming everyone around him for taking the eggs. Uh, he's including, including the weird janitor whose name is Whitey. And so this, it's not this guy's really- introduced in a jump scare. <laughs> yeah. And we don't, we don't know who this is because there's, we, we can't tell he's a janitor really. Cause this is this the thing. Mortis is showing on screen is the only shot we get of him for like the first minute he's on screen. And it's only a minute later that they cut to like a wide shot that you can see. Oh, He's holding a broom and he's wearing a janitor's uniform. He's the janitor. He's not just a fucking random <laughs> creepy. The cre- he sounds even creepier than he looks. He doesn't actually look particularly creepy in this one shot, but he, trust me, he's very he's bulging his eyes out in this. He, still. he looks like he doesn't look as like pallid as he does in the movie in the screenshot either. Uh, so I was wondering if he was named Whitey because he was perhaps supposed to be an albino. Yeah, like he, he could be mistaken for an albino. But uh, he's just a little really, lady. Yeah. <laughs> this doesn't seem very sensitive, but well, what can you do? Uh, so oh, Sarno, Sarno is going to like fire him or something. He's, he's the janitor at the museum, but doesn't he like punch Sarno in the face in this scene or is that later? <laughs> he gets, it, he gets him in a headlock. Oh, he like holds that. him in a headlock to interrogate him. Sarno does to Whitey. Yeah. Okay. And then Whitey punches Sarno in the face. Yeah. Well, it's funny because the guy says to Whitey, like, you're fired, and Whitey says, I'll see you tomorrow. Like, I felt like that was implying that there's a history of this. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, this, this type of thing happens. Yeah. Well, this Sarno fellow seems He's... very happy to immediately jump to physical abuse on his employees. It's unhinged. He's unhinged. Um, is this the scene where he steals the lady's keys? Like after after sure. interrogating think, Whitey, does he then interrogate the lady in his office? I think if it's not immediately yes. here, it's very soon after. Yeah, well, because my <laughs> my next note is Denise Richards constantly having her keys stolen. Um, so Sarno Sarno corners the lady in her office in his office and. She's like, yeah, I hate your breath. Stop. And he, he blows his breath on her. Horrible. Oh, God. <laughs> and he just, like, somehow he gets her keys and, and takes them. He's like, give me my keys back. No. Give me my eggs. And I, I think she just hits him. And uh, she hits him. Gets and her keys back. He's like, yeah, he's like backed her against the wall. And she just grabs like a fucking trophy or some shit off his desk and hits him over the head with it. So then she she runs to the the home of the family because she knows they have. Does she know they have the eggs, or does she just go there to she blow off some there. steam? I think she goes there for protection. <laughs> and uh, it's the only customer that was ever nice to her, right? The dad immediately takes the keys. Yeah, he takes her keys. For some reason. Like, why does he do that? <laughs> but this time it's playful and fun. She likes it. Yeah. Um, so she's, she's going to spend... Right. She wants to spend the night there, right? Because she's, like, in trouble with Sarno. Or right. something. Does she live with Sarno? I don't know. This doesn't make a lot of sense. I doubt it. In hindsight. I think it's more just, like, she Sarno has her point. address. Oh, she's yeah. She's the gift shop. You know? That's a good point. Um, he did say, I know where you live at one point. Yeah. I he think maybe. <laughs> probably. <laughs> he might be making this up. So the... Uh, I mean, if he didn't, he would have. <laughs> the Obviously, at this point, the, the sexual tension between the dad and the gift shop lady ramps up. Uh, they just start making out. There is a horror-style scene of the teenage girl looking around the corner at her dad making out. And it has it has like a like yeah. scary strings playing over it was she's looking around the corner, doesn't it? Or did the I the make out that? scene was fucking gross and like for too much for a kid's movie, but also like I don't know. In general, just like was too creepy. much horniness on the dad for the for a kid's movie. Yeah, they like it was like you ever see that video from like it was like from like a Christian dating show or something where 
the Christian couple kiss for the first time, but neither of them knew how to do it. It was, it was like that. It was like watching two (laughs) virgins make out. (laughs) It's like Uh, watching two 14 year olds who have only ever seen it on TV. So, I mean, at some point the, both the adults get, get clued into the dinosaur situation. The lady spends the night there. Now, has the kid told the the gift store lady at this point that the dad is horny? I think she knows. She well, right, but like, he says it out loud. He did say it earlier. In the movie. He's like, don't I worry. I was in the car when horny. they were leaving the gift shop the first time. Yeah. Was there, are you talking about the second horny? I think it's... I think I, I think I missed the second horny. Wasn't it, wasn't it when they're doing this, uh, when they're showing the Godzilla shirt? In that kind of scene, yeah. that like they're about no, to kiss, a, and one of them says, "Dad's horny." Yeah, something like uh, that. I don't know. Look at this kid, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing an Elvis face here. That's Elvis. To oh, me. I, for- I forgot to mention the article says that the T Rex Elvis was was deliberately designed with like a curled lip. To emulate Elvis, I don't know if that's <laughs> didn't, true. I didn't pick up on like, that. Didn't at pick all. up on that. No. The, the, the article said that the some of the dinosaurs were uh, designed to resemble the their namesakes in shit. subtle ways. Like Madonna's crest is like has has dark roots. Is blonde with dark roots. It's rainbow color and has has little. Has little. They should have called it. She has red lipstick on, and that is I'm, is that I'm, why I, the Casmo has very large legs? I'm cl- I'm quoting what? Like I'm MC quoting Hammer. the article here, <laughs> right? I'm quoting I'm the article here that Hammer had dark circles around his eyes to resemble his namesake. I, to resemble being black or to resemble wearing sunglasses? Oh, kind of the impression I. Sunglasses, I would assume. Did he wear, did he wear sunglasses? Constantly, <laughs> yes. Okay, all right. Maybe that would... Let's go with that. But <laughs> I would have given him also, just like that loose was also skin my around first the legs. That was also my first thought. Yeah, just me. give him parachute pants. Um, oh, is that why they did a Casmo instead of a Triceratops? Because the shape of the, the armor head thing is kind of like a flat top haircut? Mm, I oh doubt it. God. Although the rest, they, they were top well, in, in the uh, if, in the, I think this is giving the, uh, them too much credit because none of this stuff is can be picked up on, right. <laughs> like none right. none of this stuff right. is evident and like. That's what I'm saying according to the article. Right. What about what about the Stegosaurus? They didn't mention the other two. Well, you can tell the Stegosaurus. Jagger didn't get mentioned at all, and Paula. They said has huge uh, Mick Jagger get, lips, as you can I, see. <laughs> Um, with Paula, they said, I guess she has cute doe eyes, I uh-huh. guess. Like, like Paula Abdul, I guess. which by the way, that's who the yes. Paula in question is not Paula Cole, who had not, uh, who is Paula Pena. Cole? You know, uh, where have all the cowboys gone? No, I don't want to wait. The Dawson's Creek theme. Not Tell familiar. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that. Okay. Yeah. I know that song. I know that one, but not the other Lo- one. Love to explain it. What commercial was she in? I don't know. It so wasn't pure moods, and it wasn't Pepsi. So <laughs> moving on. Moving on. Um, there was something I was going to say, but I forgot. Oh, if they wanted to, if they wanted to have the pterodactyl, the the Georgiosaurus or whatever the hell, be have the hair like it has a rainbow colored crest on its head and if they wanted it to like why didn't they call her cindy lopper or I something knew. you know like madonna's has never had cindy lopper rainbow color. <laughs> ridiculous lies i was gonna say it might have been too late for cindy lopper but it, frankly i think it would have been too late for madonna it's too late for elvis it may have been too late for yeah. mc hammer it's too point. late for elvis well, I think, I think the hammer was Elvis still timeless. pretty, still relatively hot. When did when did he do the? Maybe she's Adam's like Madonna because she's naked, naked Maybe. the whole time. Maybe. <laughs> so, wow. 
the lady spends the night uh it's not clear whether they fuck or not the dad and the lady um but in the morning on the couch the (laughs) dad the dad is wearing uh he's just walking around in his boxers and it's it's raisins boxers his boxers have raisins on them and Oh, I miss that too. Every all the characters are like, "Hey, nice boxers." And he just keeps walking around in his boxers and meeting like every character in the movie in his boxers. <laughs> his boxers. He's very proud of his boxers. His son got them for him. Uh So I think it the like Vicky, her name the lady must be Vicky because my notes are just Vicky. to follow up on the MC Hammer thing. The funky head hunter did not come out until the pre the following year. So he would not have peaked. His, career would have, been, his career would have been alive and well. Okay. The Adams Family song is from the previous album. Too legit to quit. Yeah, I I was I was done by Funky Headhunter. I don't. I'm not familiar with that. I album. believe Funky Headhunter it, it signified the death knell of MC Hammer's career. <laughs> um. Moving on. So Sarno Sarno shows up at the house with a gun. Underpants. Uh, threatening the dad he says he says he's gonna spill your brains like a box of your raisins which again mm-hmm. just more i think at this point we still hadn't really figured out what the raisin thing was or if this was even on a raisin farm or what was going on uh the dad and here's the only time a dinosaur does anything in this fucking film what is it rex does he fuck an elvis Elvis bites his ankle. Is that how the dad gets the gun? His ankle. Yeah. Oh, I don't remember that. I thought he just sort of like hit him because Sarno's a weak idiot. <laughs> and everyone beats him up all the time. So the dad gets the gun, I guess because Elvis bites Sarno. Uh, this is like a latter day puppet master movie where the puppet ma- puppets don't fucking like the puppets watch the humans. Right. Play yeah. <laughs> and do maybe one thing in the whole movie. There's it's th- also like a latter day puppet master movie, and then there's this one shot in the movie where they one of the dinosaurs is a guy in a suit. <laughs> Did that it's happen? Like, that's a joke. We that's should, a joke. Like, I guess, we should, we should talk about the special effects. Um, they're okay. I like the puppets look good, right? The, the dinosaurs look really good, like, very accurate for the time. Like shockingly so, like arguably better than Jurassic Park hmm. in terms of accuracy. Uh, and I like well, that I mean, they people designing them monsters. were like really into dinosaurs, so that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, I'll get into I'll get into the design and the and the behind the scenes segment. Yeah, but um, <laughs> there's in, in another hour. What was there like one scene where Elvis was stop motion? So and that didn't look super great. It, apparently not. Apparently they had the um like the animatronic models and then they also had rod puppets for all of them. Yeah. And what I thought were uh the stop motion segments there I guess was one or the pterodactyl, excuse me, the geosternbergia. Oh, that yeah was, was, was often stop, stop motion. motion. Yeah a lot and yeah. i guess there was one shot where hammer was but most of the other stuff i thought was stop motion was actually the rod puppet and they filmed it just under cranked on a on a blue screen oh. okay. is that why their legs were so thick? I, I, I think so yeah okay they had, they had their, their legs were like noticeably thick in, in the non animatronic scenes uh gotta hide those yeah. rods somewhere so on on the other End of they're the not animated effects. super well <laughs> the robots are just kind of basic like yeah moving the head back and forth and stuff but like for this budget of movie on it would have been really easy for them to just do some like fucking lumpy shitty dinosaurs and i think they knocked it out of the park <laughs> with the, the depiction of the dinosaurs they're not the weird thing though is that they're not baby dinosaurs right they're they're, they're adult they dinosaurs catch- that are tiny Full grown dinosaurs that are small. Yeah. It's it's, it's Aztec magic. And they're super dangerous and they must be brought back. Um No, I think like David Allen and and them are just like extremely talented 
at doing low budget puppeteer stuff. Is that, is that the same as the Puppet Master? Yeah, it is. Like the early Puppet Masters, the first five. Um, and I like I'd be interested to know like what else that team worked on. I don't really know like outside of Full Moon, but. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. I'd like to open that too. That'd be cool. Um, they give it their all in everything. On any project, they are they are trying. <laughs> but on the other end of the special effects, the dad steals the gun. He gets the gun away from Sarno, <laughs> and he right. he shoots he shoots the gun into the air to scare Sarno away. And the gun has a muzzle flash, but then, like, six feet to the left, there's another muzzle flash. <laughs> it's, like, we couldn't figure out what was going on here. Like, if it was some kind of reflection, or if they, I like... I think they just composited it if, wrong. Yeah, if they fucked up the special effect. Because they're, like, he shoots a blank, and it has a muzzle flash that's real, but then there's, like, another white flash. But also, flash. the gun is almost fully off screen. There's, like... right. Two millimeters of space between the, the top of the frame and the gun. Yeah. So they didn't even really need a muzzle flash I think, at all. I think the place where it happened, I don't know how you edit this kind of shit on film because this looks like it was shot on film and it probably was because it was full moon back then. Um, but it Robot looked jobs. like it, it looked like they just took, like, if you, if you, if you if you took an effect oh, well, yeah. right and you just placed it on the on the frame yeah on the reel it looked like they just put the cell upside down so that the muzzle flash was Fli- yeah flipped around oh yeah yeah because yeah. it was it was, it was about the right it. distance away from the edge of the frame mm-hmm. yeah as the gun on the other side so it looks like for a couple frames they just did <laughs> put it on there the wrong way so that's, that's what I. If you worked on prehysteria and you know, please tell us. <laughs> they don't <laughs> mention that in the article. How, how did it happen? Uh, so Sarno. My next note is Italian Andrew Dice Clay goons. Sarno, were, were these like his cousins? Did he we say that? We completely skipped over a huge element of the movie. By the way, what is what, that? What, what One of the characters. Uh, Who? Polly Shore. Oh, brain dead. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I guess we, we sort of do meet him at this point. Yeah. Um, the the he's, girls. He's doing his best, Pauly Shore. The teen girl's girl, uh, boyfriend. The teen girl's boyfriend is a Pauly young Shore teen. ripoff. Young teen. He, he's 16, they say. Um, he, I thought he looked like Fred Armisen, like current Fred Armisen playing Polly Shore in a skit or something. Because he, like, he looks pretty Fred, old. Fred Armisen age. <laughs> he definitely Fifteen. looks much, much older than her. 56. Yeah, that sounds about right. But it's a, it's a fake, a fake Polly Shore. Uh, he doesn't really do anything in the movie right he's just he, in a couple of scenes no purpose. i thought i thought for sure he was gonna like come back and save them f- f- or something or like come back and get kidnapped like and in, be involved in the story somehow but he's just like he, he he's just in like scenes whitey. yeah <laughs> no whitey he's, has a role he, right whitey, well, whitey comes saves the day the device and the reason is for them to get around the oh he has it right he has a driver's license which Okay. Right, he drives the the teenage girl around. Yeah, but so, and then she anywhere. sees the goons, and then she goes back to like warn her family. So she's oh, like, why? Why would she even leave? Wow. In, so she could see know. them. Yeah. Well, but they don't set up a defense or anything. <laughs> they just, I know. yeah. Well, they only have a few minutes to prepare. Yeah, great, great skip, great, great script. Um. He had that gun. He never uses it. That's true. Sarno gets the, another gun. The boyfriend does see the dad in his boxers as well. That's true. He's yes. like, oh, gnarly skivvies, dude. He says something like, I know where she gets her legs from. Yeah. yeah, right? yeah. Nice, nice from. gams, Mr. S- Smith or whatever. I know where I see no, where she I, gets Now it. I know where. Yeah. So fucking weird. Unless under LGBT movies on Wikipedia. 
<laughs> he sees he sees the Casmo. He's like, "Oh, cool, cool toy. Is that your little brother's toy, dude? Where's the batteries?" But like, he doesn't. He, you would I, think this character like would like go tell someone about the dinosaurs or have I don't some. Think you're going far enough with the the surfer dude. No, yeah, I'm not. It's, it's I'm the not. most <laughs> exaggerated. Can you give us an example, of Cyraptor? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's a great character. Yeah. Um, so the house is besieged by these, this, like a a big muscle Italian and a weaselly Italian who talks like Andrew Dice Clay and Sarno, uh, and they <laughs> they they kidnap the dinosaurs. They they threaten. They kidnap the dog too. Why do they kidnap the dog? Is it because, because the she's their is like mother? A mother to them? Right. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't the doesn't Denise Richards convince them? Yeah. To bring the dog because yeah. I so, think she had the idea to to do the switcheroo and them. Well, maybe that, but also because yeah, she's like the a dog really love those dinosaurs and the dinosaurs genius. love the dog. So Vicky. Denise Richards is setting up this terrarium in the backyard to maintain a 99 degree temperature at all times and give them a little dinosaur habitat. And they're kidnapping the dinosaurs and she's like, they'll die. They'll die if they're not kept at 99 degrees. And they, if they need this dog because the dog is like their mother, they have not been kept at 99 degrees the entire movie. No, for, at this point. for none of it. But their time was running out. You didn't see that little counter in the corner of the whole movie. It's, there was no was scene where they were like film. sick. Uh, there was, you know, just, <laughs> I should clarify. It's not really Denise Richards. It's, it's just a lady who looks like her. No, Same eyebrows. Ever heard of nope. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> okay. My next note is the ending. Um, so, so they, Sarno takes the dinosaurs. He, he calls all the news outlets. He says, we've got a big, big story. Story of the oh, century. Sorry. Can I interrupt? Yes. About the two Italian goons? Yeah. Um, this was partially visible in the, um, the video zone. But those two characters reappear in the next full moon feature. Moon, the next moonbeam. Moon beam. Yeah. Moonbeam feature. Which remote. is uh, Are, remote. Did, did you look up There's, their names? Are they the same? Yes, it's literally the same characters, <laughs> same actors, so same, same characters, characters and cool. actors. This yes. is like a little. It's just like a doctor, doctor Scorbmoth or whatever from what? Puppet Master, and also the from Puppet Master Andre Eleven, Toulon? and also the no, not Andre Toulon, the the little person guy. The oh, guy. Um, yeah, Ivan Ivanov, the guy who's in Eleven. About. Yeah, Ivan Ivanov. Who's in Puppet Master Eleven and also in that movie about a skyscraper? It's a little like that, yes. So all this to say, this was the original MCU, the Moon Cinematic. Well, universe. yeah, I mean, Charles Band has always been wanting to do that. Like <laughs> a lot of crossovers between all his stuff. Um, and then there's goons in prehistoric too, but they're different goons, even okay. though they've been the same goons. So Maybe they died in remote. I don't know. So rem- <laughs> remote. The next Moonbeam movie, it, it's basically Home Alone, but the kid is in a like, r- like a model unit for some reason. Like he goes to a yeah. model house, and then thieves go in the model house, and he has to use all his remote control toys to defeat them. He's uh, got all these remote control toys in the trailer. He flies it into the classroom. His mom hears, and then he's like talking to his friend he's like mom's gonna come take away all my rc stuff i we gotta take him to the hideout until she cools down yeah yeah but the same same goons recurring goons so they don't die in prehistory a little spoiler um so <laughs> so sarno's gonna gonna show there's the press one grizzly death in this film what there's only one grizzly death in this oh film. the explorer guy yeah, he's gonna show the press the the dinosaurs. He's got a it's pre prehistoric. I forget what he says. <laughs> he says something it's prehistoric cheesy. Life. Prehistoric Turtles life. Stories. Yes. Uh, there's a scene where he's like, "Oh, hey, Geraldo," and it, like he walks off camera. 
Geraldo not in the film. Uh, so Whitey it probably would have been if they asked him. Whitey and Vicky have have somehow set up a switcheroo where the rather than the dinosaurs, the dog is in the cage. <laughs> Which I don't know if they really explain that. No, but it, how the dog gets in there? It ruins Sarno's reputation. The press laughs at him. They leave, uh, and then I don't really remember what happens. Do I they guess just, he just gives up on trying to get the dinosaurs. Because yeah, do they just punch him out one last time and then leave with the dinosaurs? Yeah, everyone piles into the truck. Pretty much, yeah, and then it just ends. So the and last <laughs> here's a new family <laughs> the as la- they're driving away. The last shot of the movie is they're driving away in the truck. Uh, you see in a in a bus stop is the Indian from the beginning of the movie, and he's his hand sort of like goes to his hip where his knife is, and he stands up and then roll credits. So my <laughs> my note here, uh it's much like Sorcerer, the uh the ending cements the film's theme that human life has no absolute value. So he's just gonna go kill them off camera. Don't spoil Sorcerer. <laughs> Nobody will remember. Um, so, Sire, after you watch Prehistoria 2 and they don't follow up on that. No. Sire, do you remember watching this for the first time as a child? Uh, no, I don't really. I, I'm pretty sure I saw this. But I don't like remember specifics really. I remember renting it as a toddler ish. We rented the first two at the same time, and I remember really loving it because I would like anything with dinosaurs. But this so you like sucks. I mean, <laughs> it's not. Also, by the way, the thing with the the this screen cap is that the credits play over it. They freeze yeah, frame just in the credit. <laughs> it's very funny. Um, it is incredibly funny. Like it's it's for like low budget children's fair. It's not like the worst movie I've ever seen. You know, I thought it was fine. It's better yeah, than it, some Disney Channel movies. I've I seen. think uh, some of the some of the shit was weird. Like anytime the dad and and Denise Richards were together was creepy. Uh, I don't think they established the raisin thing very well. So I like, think it was kind of boring. The dinosaurs it, don't do anything. Yeah, it could have been tightened up a lot, but it's not like offensively bad. Unlike uh, no, no, no. It's not. No, ins- you're just not the target audience. <laughs> well, that's true too. I'm not the, three years old anymore. The dinosaurs, like the Stegosaurus, does nothing. But like all the dinosaurs have. Sort of one scene where they sort of do something like, you know, who this is for it's for if you're a parent now and you have like a three or four year old and you want to watch something and they like dinosaurs, you put this on, you might be able to laugh at some of the weird shit that's like aimed at adults. You know how people always say that, oh, things are aimed at adults. Well, this this kind of does actually have things like that, right? I think I think an actual child would probably be too bored by this. (laughs) I'm not they like I don't. Dinosaurs. I don't think this was as boring as Dragon Slayer. Damn, to, to, just the <laughs> the not... idea of little dinosaurs, little like pet dinosaurs that as a kid you can handle and you can pet it is in itself like so appealing that I feel like building a movie around that is just like fluff. It doesn't matter what it is, just like that concept is so strong that it doesn't really matter what the rest of the movie is in watching priest area two. I feel I, I got like halfway through it so far. I don't know if I'm going to continue, but I, I feel like it's a more solid premise. Like Can I share my weird. priest area two story? Yeah. yeah. I remember. Let me look up when I actually came out. The next year. I think well, it, well, 90, was it says 94, 94, 94, 94, years old. It says at it. the end of the video zone, the fun and imagine may continue if the dinosaurs choose to return. So, so they, first they off, did. Wikipedia says this made a hundred million dollars in in rentals, which I think is insane. Mm. It was a big biz. 
It was really big. Anyway, Prehistoria 2 came out when I was three. So we rented the two of them at the, the same time. And I remember Prehistoria 2 opens and then they cut to like credits at a weird time. And as a, as a toddler, I was like, oh, is that the whole movie? <laughs> I thought the same thing last like night. Four minutes, like the beginning. Because the <laughs> they there. I was like, oh, okay, that was well, short. Let me explain this. Because I, I specifically watched Prehistoria 2 to see if they followed up on the 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 Indian threat at all. And of course they didn't. <laughs> How it starts is as a cold open. The, the dinosaurs are in the greenhouse from the first movie. And it's you can infer that they they are not present because they they've hired this old man to take care of the, the, the greenhouse and which includes the dinosaurs to feed the dinosaurs and all that. because they're they they're on vacation. Or something. It's mentioned later. They and the dinosaurs have uh, little like name tags now. They're like little dog tags. They're not even collars. They're like chain <laughs> ch- chain collars. A little medallion with their name on it. It's uh, like that chain that keeps a pen stuck to a, a bank desk, right? Yeah. <laughs> so. The old man leaves when he's done taking care of them, and the raisin men come in because the dinosaurs got into the raisins again. But I guess while while the the tailors or whatever are away, they've hired the raisin men to come and pick up the raisins and and put the raisins into the box so they can ship the raisins out and then continue their raisin business while they're on vacation. Uh, but the dinosaurs got into the raisins, so they accidentally get scooped up with the raisins and put in a box and put on a train. And off they go to the next movie. Then the credits start. Like, right. After seven minutes. And as a kid, I thought that was the whole movie. Yeah. So did you turn it off? No, I I kept going. I mean, count as a kid. Oh, I I remember like one of my parents was there and I was like, uh, is that, that it? Was that like the end of the first movie? What was, what's going on here? And I was like, I don't know. Keep watching. And then like credits started. (laughs) The credits start, and as a kid, you, you see the credits, and you're like, oh, I guess this is the end. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. The plot of Prehistoria 2 is that there's there's a rich kid who lives in a mansion, and his parents aren't around, and he finds the dinosaurs, and then some other people try to steal the dinosaurs. So It's like Richie it's, Rich. It's sort of Home Alone- I think I, it's going in a home alone direction wants or remote dinosaurs. directions with, with the dinosaurs instead Would of you? a paint can. Do I want these dinosaurs? No, they're a menace. <laughs> He'd eat all your raisins. Eat all my raisins, eat all my food. They shit all over the place. You just got to build a terrarium in your backyard and keep them there. When you're not looking at them, they have with- thick legs. When you're looking at them, they're like spindly. What's going on with them? So I look uh, gotta during the video build a terrarium zone, with like a insanely detailed water feature that she could never have possibly done overnight. Can can you put the Indian up again? Yeah. I just noticed something about this. What did you notice? This is gonna be great for the the audio listeners. Yeah. Uh, you can see the cameraman in the reflection of the door oh. to the left. Oh, you can? <laughs> cool. There that's he good. is. I had to go back and watch it to check and make sure that's what I, I was actually seeing. And um, he's moving. I just want to say in the video zone, Charles Band mentions his, one of his upcoming Moonbeam movies, Micropolis, The Shrunken City. So he's back on his shrinking shit again. But uh, did that ever come out? I I looked it up because I wondered. It didn't come out until 1998. Well, interesting. This is are we done with the movie? Because this isn't this is a good segue to the next the making of segment. Yeah, we're done with the movie. Anyone has anything else to say? Okay. So I kind of figured because this is a movie about little guys that you know it was a, a Charles Band incepted concept. But no, I have read uh, the article about Prehysteria in Starlog's Dinosaur magazine, which is a one-off magazine released in the summer of 1993, 
to commemorate the uh, inordinate number of dinosaur-themed movies that came out in the summer of 1993. Uh, we've got Super Mario Brothers, Carnosaur, Prehistoria, and of course, Jurassic Park. Uh, we have a six-page article about Prehistoria here, which goes into the making of the film. Um, so this was actually an idea from Peter Von Schale, who appears in the, uh, the video zone. This, is the, this was an idea he came up with, the pet dinosaurs concept. I guess he, he, like he wrote a screenplay, and he's also like a storyboarder. I guess still, I think he's working. Mortis, since you looked that up? Somebody did. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, and you could, you could tell from the storyboards that there was like an entire like prehistoric se- sequence with full-grown dinosaurs and all that, which... Sadly, did is not this, make it to the final cut. Is this the guy with the wife? Yeah. This is the guy with the wife. The wife, guy. The wife yep. who also worked on the film and works in film. Right. So um, he is working still. Okay. Maybe it was Slushy. Sorry. Slushy's a bigger was, looker I mean, upper than I am. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so he had this whole screenplay and storyboard thing put together and was shopping it around to studios and no one was really buying it until I guess he eventually sold it to new line, but then new line didn't do anything with it, but he still wanted to make this movie. And he realized, Oh shit, this is a movie about little guys. You know who (laughs) who might be interested in this? Charles band. Yeah. So he pitches the idea to Charles Band, and Charles Band is on board with it. Uh, unfortunately, New Lion still owns the original script. So he mm. writes up a new treatment, also themed around uh, pet dinosaurs. It's like the, the plot was rewritten, but it was still around this same central concept. Uh, so he writes a new treatment and gives that to Charles Band, who has his like stable of writers rework it. That's uh, Greg Sudden Death and Mark <laughs> Gold. <laughs> right. So they write up a first draft of this new script, and I want to read verbatim what the uh, the article says. The first idea they came up with involved, believe it or don't. Armenian raisin farmers, so the <laughs> fucking raisin thing has been in since the beginning. Armenian, Armenian raisin farmers, the La Brea tar pits, and a dog impregnated by a horny, if nearsighted, miniature dinosaur. What? Mm. Well, um, I want to see that movie. So <laughs> the writers <laughs> turn, in the, turn in the first draft. Uh... Peter Von Schale says, nah, (laughs) even Charles Band says, we're not doing this. So they, they completely rewrite it and we got what we eventually got. Um, And then the, I wonder what the original script's like then, like the original original. It doesn't, uh, it didn't really go into detail. Probably didn't have raisin farmers in it. Yeah, I wonder if it's any good. Uh, hold on, it, it did have some. It was mostly about like the like how the dinosaurs came to be in present day. It said, but I'm skimming this and now I can't find it. But I guess in the original script, they also like became large eventually, mm-hmm. and that that was like the. That's off the table. The climax of the movie. Yeah, so they, they knew they weren't going to be able to do that with the full moon budget. Yeah. Um, so also, um, yes, God damn it, I just closed it and I need the name. The, wi- the wife of Peter Von Schale, Molly Von Schale. I don't think that's her name. But <laughs> you're there. So, this is a good magazine, by the way. You should... It sounds like you have the physical magazine there. I do, yes. Okay. I own this as a child, and I rebought it a few years ago. Incredible. Uh, With the lenticular cover. You're going to say you rebought it this week? (laughs) No. 
Uh, God damn it. Andrea Vaughn. There's so many. Okay. She sculpted the dinosaurs and then David Allen and company turned them into puppets. There, there's a good segment on the video zone about how she sculpts dinosaurs. I think if I was a kid that, that would have like, yeah, on the video zone, they're like showing them referencing skeletals and stuff, which is more (laughs) effort than most dinosaur productions put into anything. So the the video did their homework. The video zone stuff with the Von Schallies, I think would have, I would have been more into that as a kid than the actual film. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> they were at the end of the tapes, right? I'm trying to remember if I They saw were at the them. end of the tapes, yeah. I probably did. Probably after the credits, I don't know. Yeah, she's making a brachiosaurus out of a coat hanger and some um some sculpy. Lo- loose wire and sculpy. Yeah. They did a they did a great job. All credit to the Von Schallies. Everyone else involved in this movie, I don't maybe maybe not. Maybe I should put a little more effort in. Oh, also, I guess David Allen, I, I don't remember if this is what got mentioned in the Vito Zone, was like, this movie already has two directors, and he was directing all the shit with the dinosaurs. Like, any shot that was just dinosaurs, he so technically like directed. Two and so a half directors? Like, yeah, he's like, yeah. Two and a half directors they couldn't make one good movie. <laughs> Have we mentioned who the two directors were yet? No. <laughs> it was Charles Band and Albert Band. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty serious to just Albert, by the way. And then three is David Dakota, right? Is it? I think so. I, I remember hearing that. I think, I think Charles Band at some point says David Dakota, who directed prehistoria three for me i like i think i've heard him say that for they just reason. wheel out poor david yeah for like projects that they don't want to do yeah i don't know if he was credited hey david you you free for a weekend man. and he's like why <laughs> Prehistoria three <laughs> he's very nervous <laughs> <laughs> you free next weekend why prehistoria three has a girl yeah on the cover i've got this i've got this soft boy. thing for you Prehistoria 2 apparently was just Albert Band, and then 3 was David Dakota. So is there anything else to say about Prehistoria? I think that's it. You know, like I said, watch it if you have a kid and you want to... They really love dinosaurs. They might get something out of it. Fucking show your kid Jurassic Park instead. Show your kid Jurassic Park again. But then, after Jurassic Park... If you're an insatiable dinosaur child like me and Cyraptor... You're going to get to prehysteria. I thought I, I thought this was fine. I th- it was fine. I thought it was, it was interesting just... as a in the larger full moon picture, and just as a thing. Yeah, I liked it for the full moon connections. I thought that was that was what kept me going. If this was like a random kids movie, I wouldn't want to watch it. I would call this the best of the worst, <laughs> the most entertaining for any reason. Well, I enjoyed this more than our next picture. Yeah. Which is, two, I mean. which is uh, Godzilla. 1998 Godzilla, Godzilla. 1998. So, watch it. An See oft, you next week. An I said, unfairly maligned oh, fun film. Unfairly? It is, deserves unfairly all the hate. Unfairly maligned. Deserves I all the hate. Very fair. Incredibly fun movie. I think we're too for children and adults. on this movie. We're too nice. I didn't think it would. I'd never seen this. Had everyone else seen this? Probably, right? I saw it in oh, theaters. Yeah. Yes. It was the first movie that ever disappointed me. I saw you know, it many times as a kid. Same, maybe. I don't. I don't remember why I didn't see this. Like. I was huge into Godzilla and I was like collecting all the VHSs, you know, as they were coming out. And, uh, cause it was kind of hard to get Godzilla you, in the 90s. Did you have versus Biollante on VHS? Uh, I did. <gasps> yes. Dude, you, you don't still have it though. That would be worth. No. Well, probably it? not now. <laughs> 
But there, that was was it the worth hardest a lot one of... to get for a long time. Weird. Um, then I had that on Godzilla a... two on VHS. I I just didn't see this. Like I didn't see it in the theater, and then I didn't see it afterwards. Like I never rented it. I was just like, I don't know. I don't care. So I had never seen this until now. Uh, Is this poster right? What's mm-hmm. up with Godzilla's eye? That's just. I don't know. That's what it look like. It looks. Why is looks it right white in the middle? Oh, from it's this point on, uh, can we not refer to it as Godzilla? It's Zilla or Gino, please. <laughs> Gon- well, we can call him Gondzilla. What is? What does Homer call him in the movie? Oh, fuck. Gondzilla! Do this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Homer's not in this. Roger Ebert in the film calls it Godzilla. Well, no the. The news it's guy. Gochira, the news guy. You idiot. He says, yeah, he yeah, says right, gone to Zilla yeah, or something. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Zilla I thought I thought it was only the or Zilla. I also had a souvenir magazine from this movie. I thought I had this, a ton of shit from this movie. A ton of merch. I I I'll, I would say this that. is like a two out of five. I don't know. I don't think this is like. I, I think nightmarishly on, I horrible. Go that I would. Hmm. I'm checking my uh, your review. I like my the tool because that came out. Because you know, I gave it a one out of five. Now this is a one out of five. Hmm. Godzilla movies. As right as far as Godzilla movies, I mean, this movie pulls a lot from the original in 1985. Um, now that's a boring movie. Mm, disagree. <laughs> I kind of like the 85 one. That's the one with oh like the God. giant uh, stuff on the boat, right? The sea louse, yeah. Yeah, I like that stuff. Um, well, that's Trump like terrorist. 10 minutes or something. Um, that was the first Godzilla movie that. I ever saw. So, I don't know. It holds some place. Um, well, for me, anyway. it's realizing that I, I skew Japanese Godzilla movies a little higher just for that foreign aspect and maybe that's wrong of me to do it's more smart if you're watching a foreign movie i don't i don't think it's because it's american this movie like i i I don't think it's bad because it's american i'm saying like i think godzilla 2014 is one of the top five godzilla movies it's possible to do a, a good american godzilla just saying yeah like the one where he fights king kong no, well, not that <laughs> that's terrible. I think, I think the problem with this movie is that it was made by a idiot and a psychopath, and a, he's been a making petty the same child. movie for thirty years. <laughs> Roland Emmerich or the Dean same Devlin? movie for thirty years. How's it get away with it? Like, it's bad for Roland Emmerich though. <laughs> like he, like he does you know, have a, have a wheelhouse, but like normally they're at least competent in in accomplishing what they're trying to do. This one was like, I don't know. It's like a goofy mess. It is. It is goofy and it is a mess. Independence day is kind of a mess, but it does a much, much better job of like balancing all these different like character plot threads into like a coherent narrative. This I is think like characters just drop in and out without really like what the fuck was the point of the news radio lady? That was yeah. Who she disappeared was like the middle third of the she was right. horny. All right, we gotta do <laughs> now I'm gonna go off about the horniness. We gotta we gotta get into the, the Matthew plot. Matthew Broderick is so first. fucking hot. Have you seen him? So this movie starts with uh a lot of French nuclear tests and Iguana's mm-hmm. watching them. In stock footage, and then uh, and then Matthew Broderick is zapping worms with electricity. Wait, it's no. Chernobyl. First, first there's a Japanese boat, which is a model, and it's a good model. The special effects in this movie are really, really good, except for Godzilla, who looks like shit. I thought I, that was weird. <laughs> like Godzilla hasn't aged well. The CG. I thought the miniatures and the chase scenes looked really fucked up. You did? Yeah, oh yeah. Like the car I think there chase were parts scene that looked good and parts the, that looked fucked up. It I'm mixed. I, we're not even going to do the plot. We're just going to talk about random. Uh, well, I mean the plot's the, pointless. The, the um, 
it it reminded me of like the 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 miniatures i mean of the city reminded me of like batman returns gotham city yeah which is heavily stylized and is like supposed to look like right sort of this towering are you talking about the helicopter part yeah yeah and it just i don't know it was like godzilla running through this corridor of buildings it didn't feel it like was, i thought an actual city like it just i thought they were trying to evoke the trench run it kind, I, I can kind of see it it and feels that's how it felt to me it's it Godzilla is stylized and it's weird and it's in, out of in place in size throughout the movie to an extremely annoying degree yeah he really does He's like a transformer dur- during the, during the Apache chase, he like jumps up to eat the helicopter and his head, it, his jaws fully encase and close this Apache, which is, you know, a 60 foot long helicopter probably. Yeah. And then at the end he's, he tries to bite Matthew Broderick and he's like, you know, maybe he could, half, he could have enclosed Matthew T-Rex. Broderick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. So Matthew Broderick zapping worms. In Chernobyl. In Chernobyl. The the army comes and gets it. This movie's him. so long, by the way. It's it's way too long. Um there's there's a running joke. Matthew Broderick's character's name is like Matthew Stepanopoulos or something, right? No, it's not even that. It's Tatopoulos. Tatopoulos. Yeah, Tatopoulos. And not hard to say, not Right. Particularly long. There's a running joke for a while where people are calling him like Matthew Tabompolopoulos and stuff. You know, like they just say his name wrong because Greek names are funny. Um, and then when the French people try to say it, they're like the the, the warm guy. <laughs> Which, like, I feel like French people being Europeans would be pretty good at saying Greek names, right? Better than Americans for sure. Uh, so for some reason they're taking this this Chernobyl worm guy to the Godzilla scene where, <laughs> where Godzilla stomped on some stuff. Uh, they put him in the big, Leave, what? leaving completely even flat footprints. Yeah. So they got standing in it. The original you're standing in your sample mortis. <laughs> what, where I don't see it. The original 1954 Godzilla has this exact same scene. It's much better in that. It looks better. They're standing in the Godzilla footprint. Um, in this one, it looks like cheap and shitty and stupid. <laughs> and also, they mm-hmm. they zoom out. It's like a joke. Showing that it's a big footprint. Yeah. And then cut back to them outside the footprint and say, that's a big footprint. Did you know that was a big footprint? It's like, yeah, I. We, it was made for an, American Cyraptor. Uh, no shit, it's a big footprint. Do the, do the. It's a big footprint, and then do the the big zoom out. Yeah. So you can see how big the footprint is. So there's like a science team figuring, like, why why is there a big footprint? Why did they blow up this Japanese fishing boat? What's happening? There's a. There's a science babe boss who's in charge of the science team, who is the news radio lady that Sarapter has mentioned. Um, in in my yeah, from news radio, in my notes it says I'm surprised this isn't Broderick's ex-wife in terms of the script, uh, but she is she is instantly horny for Matthew Broderick, like just dripping, <laughs> with, like not not even with not even a joke, yeah. Just Instantly like, horny. God, this Matthew Tatopoulos is... She's hornier for Matthew Broderick than the hot. the guy was for Denise Richards in the previous film. Yes. Um, and this is a running... This is another running theme throughout She's the movie. She's the best actress in the movie, then. <laughs> Good. Uh, so these... Like, this science team is barely in the movie. Like... They're in this scene, and then like they kind of come back at the end, right? Like this, the lady and the bit, sort yeah. of fat guy. Like they, they basically are not in the film. Yeah, they're in the cartoon a lot, though. Really, the same characters? Oh, I think so. Yeah, it's not Audrey. I think, isn't it them? 
is Audrey the other girl who's horny for Matthew? Yeah, could be wrong. So, it's- my next note is boat terror real. Um, so, <laughs> so Godzilla blows up some more boats. Uh, there's like, it is her. Another another pretty good effect scene where they like just on a soundstage sink three whole ass boats in like a pool and like it looks good you don't really see godzilla here i don't think but it's like i don't know it's just a good see a, a toenail or something yeah uh and then there's the famous water lump scene i don't know if i'm that's my next note <laughs> the water lump like i remember seeing that this is the one thing I remember, because like I don't know what this was in front of when I saw it, but I saw it in the theater. It's there was this they just played this scene where there's some fishermen and they're fishing, and then this big lump of water, you know, comes out of the water. Because I don't know, would this happen? <laughs> like if a big creature was, wouldn't it break the surface at some point? I don't know. At I, some no, point. I think it. But it depends on the speed it's the like, creature is moving. It's moving pretty fast. I, I buy it. Right. But this, it was this famous teaser trailer. It's just this part of the film. This is not the teaser. It's the not? Way. Is it different footage? Uh, do you want me to get into what the teaser was? Sure. Please do. There was maybe a full three minute teaser trailer that came out in front of The Lost World, I think, which was a full year before. Godzilla came out, which I remember thinking at the time, holy shit, this movie's not coming out for another year. Like that was as mm-hmm. as a how old was I when like, that's pretty long something. for a movie. Yeah, that's like <laughs> holy that's how I'll probably get into this later, but that's how much they were building up this movie. Like mm-hmm. I, I think that's maybe something that's been forgotten about a lot about this movie is the lead up to it. Yeah. Um, but the teaser is they're in the I don't know what the fucking museum, the New York Museum of Natural History or whatever. It's it's a, a class getting a tour through the dinosaur exhibit. And all of a sudden the ground starts shaking. Boom, boom. And the skeletons are rattling. And all of a sudden through the skylight, the big giant skylight of the dinosaur hall, huge foot comes, crushes the T-Rex skeleton. And you can tell even at this early stage that is a that's a dinosaur foot and that's not Godzilla's foot. <laughs> and that was the whole that was pretty much it. I don't know if I've well, seen in that. This, in this because I didn't he's see a mutated Lost iguana. Right. I feel like I have that. seen that. See, I don't know if it aired or or. I remember or seeing the teaser trailer, the fishing one, yeah. in theaters. I that was the it. actual trailer. That I just was saw the so fishing one. Actual yeah, I I remember my feeling being like, "Is this is this Godzilla? Is this Godzilla? It, what? Oh, it is Godzilla, huh? Am I well, excited about obsessed, this? Six, I don't know. Seven. I was six or seven years old and obsessed with Godzilla, so I was like losing my shit. I was that's a, fifteen a pretty, and obsessed with Godzilla. It was a pretty decent set piece, like a pretty decent like action shot." This film you know, was my introduction to the. Any. This film was my introduction to the concept of the Godzilla. That is a and shame. I loved, it. I loved it. I was very aware of Godzilla at this point. Like I, because the, they used to show reruns of like the show movies on like TNT or yeah. whatever all That's the fucking version. time when I was a kid. I didn't, like I don't know that I had ever sat through a full Godzilla movie, but I had definitely seen bits and pieces of it on TV. And I, we had the VHS of Godzilla 1985, at least. And I had an episode of the Hanna-Barbera cartoon. I did too. On VHS. Was it the Firebird? I think it was. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I got that. For some reason, I got that as a, as a present when I lost my first tooth. I remember. Don't know why. <laughs> um, and then I used to rent the NES game all the time. From yeah. The store. So, uh, that was I, I. I was very aware of Godzilla and oh, and I also bought a ton of the fucking uh, Trendmasters figures. I love them. They were so good. Guys. Yeah, those were good. I had most of uh, those. Like I remembered, I was not huge into Godzilla as a kid, but just 
on my birthday, it would have been my like eighth birthday or something. My grandmother took me to Toys R Us and said, you can get just 10 toys or something. I got all fucking Godzilla toys. So I had an ass load of those. And fucking toys. I, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I realized that <laughs> now that was like probably several hundred dollars worth of Godzilla <laughs> toys. My, but, uh, that's, that was Nana. Nana, Nana would get me whatever I wanted. That's what rest in peace, Nana. Thank you, Nana. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I'm not quite, let me just before I forget. Okay. Uh, so then I, then I, I was semi excited for this and saw it and didn't like it that much, but it prompted me to go on the internet and seek out information on, you know, Japanese Godzilla. Mm hmm. I haven't been completely unaware of like the, the Heisei movies because they never really got much of a release over here other than 85. Uh, so thank you to Barry's Temple of Godzilla, which I, I derived much enjoyment from as a 12 year old. Thank you, Barry. That, that's all. Thank you, Barry. Thank you, Nana. <laughs> and thank you, um, Ishiro Honda. Yeah, like. 85 was the first, like I, I had heard of Godzilla as a little kid. Like my uncle would talk about Godzilla. And I was like, what are, you, what are you talking about? What's Godzilla? Oh, it's a big monster. Oh, And then oh, the, there had, would be like <laughs> the Imperial Godzilla toys. I had, I, I had an Imperial Godzilla and I had the Dorme Godzilla knockoffs of like fucking 12 inch tall ones. I had two of them. I still have my Imperial Godzilla. Yeah, we you know. You all saw it. Yeah. And then uh, I saw 85 and I was like, it's oh yeah, it's Godzilla. I'm gonna finally see a Godzilla movie, and it like scared the shit out of me, and was also slow. And I was, I was also terrified. I was, I was <laughs> like so really confused uh, by Godzilla. I, I think it was the uh, the sea lice that scared me. The, yeah, they were so cool. They they scared me. Three years old, two years old. I they know. killed that guy. <laughs> yeah, they like. It's like trilobite terror. <laughs> it's exactly like that. Um. But yeah, I, I like picked up, I got, I didn't see another Godzilla movie until like I was like probably five, six years later. And I found, I found two, two Godzilla VHSs at a, th a thrift store in a like smaller town than the town I grew up in. <laughs> and I got those. And then like they started doing those releases with the, I don't know, like the unified art covers you know what i'm talking mm -hmm. about sorry after mm -hmm. they all had that like Whereas, i'm looking realistic on style art like wikipedia for the one that i grew up with the most which is mega mecha godzilla 2 and uh it's saying like it didn't get a home release until 99 which feels impossible to me because i watched it as a toddler and i'm just wondering if you knew if bootlegs were popular at the time or what so when you, you said you mecha, definitely mean hey say mecha godzilla 2. what do you mean when you say mecha godzilla 2 I mean, the one that got released, Mega Godzilla 2, in 1993. Okay. So I would probably be watching it in like 94, 95. So the one where he turns Is into this? Garuda or whatever? Yeah, with yes. the backpack thing. The backpack yeah. thing. Super, Super Mega Godzilla. The Is this a, like a Final Fantasy 3, Final Fantasy 6 situation? No, this is no, just it, like, they just it, called it that because he's like the second Mega Godzilla in a way. It's for, well, like well, not there's also God there's also Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla. Yes, I, I mean like if your family like Asian markets would have well, it now, like it's, it's making me VHS uh, feel uh very powerful emotions because I know my father would get me like random things ahead of time and like bootleg and for him to do that for Godzilla for me, despite him hating nerd shit. <laughs> And fantasy shit is uh it's it's uh feels really good. Like like any any kind of like Chinatown supermarket like would often yeah, I mean, have like Philly a big Chinatown. section of Was it big, dubbed? I don't it remember. Have, it couldn't have been. I don't think yeah, it was. I, I mean I guess it I, could have been if like, you know, like there might have been like sure a Hawaiian dub or something. That I also have. had the I had the toy of them and I still have the toy of them and I love it. Of Mecha Godzilla too, I mean. The toys are definitely around. It's a, and uh, it's a mystery. I, so I had that on tape, 
And I had one with anger. It's one of the Showa ones. But I don't remember which one. When they're like fighting in a volcano. Oh. Uh, was that Raids, raids again? again? Yeah. yeah. Might have been. Those were like the two I had on tape that I would watch over and over again. Raids again sucks. <laughs> I'm aware. I've watched that as an adult. It kind of sucks. <laughs> Sorry to hear that. I don't think my Godzilla 2 is particularly good either. But um, I've also watched that as an adult. I have it on DVD now. I haven't seen um, any of the 90s I like it Godzillas in a long time. Uh, like since they were new. It's still a lot of nostalgia though for me, Cy Raptor. That's it's my Phantom Menace. Okay. Uh, that's I'll go to bat. For it's it. not horrible. I, I it's none of the hasty movies are horrible. I wanted these guys yeah, like to do. Menaces. <laughs> I said after Puppet Master, you guys should do all the Godzillas. Yeah. It would go insane. I'd be up for that. You can't do it. You can't do it. It's, it's unhealthy. Lie. What are you talking about? I did. I you can watch all the Godzilla. <laughs> I watched them all in a month. In a row, not in a row to review them in a row on, on a podcast. One, I watched one a day. Most of them were good. In October That's 2012. Probably not true. And reviewed them. And were day. you trying to were you were you trying to do it before the world ended in December 2012? No, I was doing it because of uh new one was coming out. It was some, like it was James Rolfe's <laughs> We know that guy Monster Madness Godzilla Thon that made me first take notice of his g- broader work as a uh f- a film connoisseur. I decided Four years later, to do my own Godzilla thon because I had never s- watched all the Godzilla movies. I'd seen only a handful, and I decided I'm a big Godzilla fan. I haven't seen any of his movies. I have to correct this. So that's that, all that shit's on Tumblr. If you want to read 31 Cy Raptors Godzilla reviews, I'm not sure which ones I haven't seen at this point. I feel like I've seen all of them. I've seen them all except the fucking anime trilogy. Yeah, I haven't seen those. I have, I have not seen those. But tried I did watching the first one like twenty times and fell asleep every single time. I did watch the anime show though that came out. I liked that. I started that and also fell asleep for different reasons. Maybe I'll watch that on. Can't remember what that's somewhere. called, but I did like that. Singular Zero point. point. Singular point. Singular. Singular point. Okay. That sounds right. Have Singular not- point. Yeah, I've also not seen it. The what is American it? animated series, Chibi Godzilla Raids Again, Japanese short anime series. What? What? That sounds cool. Never heard of it. Is that the came new- out this year, oh, April first yeah, of June. New- they did it with fucking Nendo Roids or something. <laughs> oh, anyway, right? Like, yeah, it's stop motion or something. Anyway, somehow my family had a bootleg copy of Mecha Godzilla Two, and. Uh, Whoever got it for me, That's whether weird. it was a family member or my father or whoever mm-hmm. went to the shady part of Chinatown in Philadelphia, thank you. It's not even the shady part. You just have to know just kidding, how to yeah, ask. <laughs> Which, uh, what part of the Godzilla 1998 were we talking about? Well, uh, we're about to get to where Godzilla is we revealed. Got through it. Oh, the okay. water lump. Yeah, so the water yeah. lump happens. He, right, because I was so excited after watching those two tapes over and over again, seeing the water lump trailer teaser thing made me just so excited as a six or seven year old. Yeah, you're you're avoiding talking about the film at this point. Godzilla makes landfall. Godzilla is. Do they ever explain why he ends up in New York? No, or is it just random? So, just so to- uh, there was confusion for me about this, like. The first that Godzilla is in French Polynesia, which is within, in the Pacific, Ocean. which is in the Pacific Ocean. The South Pacific he he Ocean. destroys a Japanese fishing boat, which must be in the Pacific Ocean. And then he's in New York, which confused me. But I guess where is the North Atlantic Ocean? Yes. <laughs> as far as you can get from the South Pacific where Ocean. where they had Matthew Broderick like stand in the footprint was the Panama Canal. We, we realized. Oh, OK. That makes so Godzilla took a very circuitous long, route sense, across but... basically the whole world to go to New York for no real apparent no reason. reason. Yeah. 
He's, <laughs> he's just he's just going. He's just looking for fish. That's all he just cares about. Tourist. Um, my next note is the effects aren't great. <laughs> so we kind of meet this other group of people, which is like Matthew Broderick's college girlfriend, her friend from work, and Homer from The Simpsons, who is a cameraman. Oh, um, that Homer. Yeah, that Homer. Not the Homer who is her boss. Right, but then also her boss is... Her boss also isn't Homer, Homer because her boss is... Um, what's his fucking name? The news guy. Kent Brock... Kent Brock... <laughs> what is this? Yeah, Kent, Kent Brockman. Prince Brockman. Skinner, right? Okay, yes. The, yeah, the, so... The, <laughs> the There's an evil... Let me just, let me just stop... Okay. Here and say this film has half of the cast of The Simpsons in it. Uh, none it's of got, which are Homer. <laughs> it's got Harry Shearer, Hank Azaria, Harry, Nancy Major Cartwright Rose. in a small cameo. Yeah. And who else? That's it. That's has Is it just those like, three? There's six main cast members of The right, Simpsons. Right, 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 right. So That's half of them. There's an evil news guy, like not evil, evil. Marginally, so no Marginally news. evil. Um, no, huge Mar- asshole <laughs> margin lisa margin I, lisa i, I realized that Did but he, he is marginal evil people? what's that what did he kill fifty thousand people no it's That's 20 that 20 thousand is the number did he kill twenty thousand people ten thousand did he kill ten thousand people isn't it, it ten thousand i don't to be irredeemably evil it might be i don't know what this he wouldn't be on he, he probably evil he it's he was cutthroat he was cutthroat and he stole news stories but the point is, he's a news guy in the film who's constantly reading news, but he's also Kent Brockman from The Simpsons, who is a news guy, and he's doing the exact same voice, and it's it's really bizarre. <laughs> it's 100% the Steam Tams guy. Right, but it's also Kent Brockman. Yeah, but it's the Steam Hams guy I mean, also. Okay, sure. Yes. Simpsons has like five and Mr. Burns and Smithers voices. and Flanders yeah. and Reverend Lovejoy. I just thought it was strange that he's doing the that. same newsman voice from the cartoon where he plays. A I've newsman. only ever seen the f- the first season of the Simpsons and the movie and nothing else. I just wanted to yeah, get that off. Simpsons, we're, Simpsons, we're, not, we're not going down. Do we, should we go down that path? Okay, we're going to talk about the Simpsons now. How, how much? <laughs> I don't want to talk about <laughs> when Simpsons. do you think the Simpsons became bad when did Godzilla when I moved out of my house. Come out? this is a joke don't answer this question when I moved out of my house and I didn't have cable anymore which would have been 99 it's about the same time everyone answered the question Godzilla ruined the Simpsons <sighs> anyway so We've still got two hours to go. Either. Yes. So there's oh, there's a the Homer, Harry Shearer, whatever. God damn it. He's a he's a camera guy and he's out trying to get the scoop from Mo. Godzilla. Hank Azaria. Hank Azaria is the camera guy. Okay. I don't I think know. He's animal in the movie. Apu. He's animal. He used to be Apu, but animal. Don't they call him animal? Yes, his they name call is him animal. animal in the movie. Okay, so animal's trying to get the scoop. Godzilla almost steps on him, but he's between the toes and he's like. Ah! I lived. I lived, bitch. Iconic scene. Um, Godzilla looks like shit. Just Godzilla is just walking also, through New York. Once again, he barely fits between Godzilla's toes. But earlier, he stepped on a t- an entire T Rex skeleton. Well, that was not crushed in the movie. It, crushed it under one toe. That didn't he happen never. in the movie. Well, it's not canon. All right. So it is canon. It's a mid quote. <laughs> I guess at this point. What are- what? What are the things? What are the thing on a lizard foot, Cyraptor? You said is. Oh, on do you the want to tie the, the? It's called the hallux. It's the like most people would call it like the dew claw. It's on like a dog or something. It's is that the thing on the Velociraptor that's big? No, big that's hook? the second toe. Oh, okay. They also have a hallux. It's it's basically the big toe. It's just re- reduced, um, but it's. Uh, it would norm like on an would, actual if you would animal. refer to the image of the Chasmo, uh, is what's the Halix here? Is the Halix the thing that does not have one? Oh, okay. This is not a real no, that's a the, you know, no you know, you know, you know, on a on a dog's like 
on a dog's chuffer, or whatever the like, fuck like, Count calls like, it. Like a dog's thumb. Cooker. Uh, on cooker. a dog's cooker. Or cat. cat like cuddle? halfway off up their paw, they've got that one little claw there that like oh, okay, just kind of yeah. dangles and doesn't do anything. That's, that's the hallux. The okay. Yeah, it's yeah. A, I don't I don't know if it's called the hallux. That's the one that's hard to trim. Way, only some of them do. Mammal, but right. It's basically yeah. the big toe or the thumb. Uh, All right. So it's supposed to be on the inside. Mm-hmm. Of the foot, and they didn't know what the fuck they were doing, so they just stuck it on the outside of Godzilla's feet. Well, Godzilla is a mutated iguana from Polynesia. I know, but the, the, so. it's very obvious what they were doing, and they did it wrong. <laughs> well, he's just a, mutated he's a, to the other side. He looks literally nothing like a mutated iguana. He looks like a fucking dinosaur with a Jay Leno chin and, and spikes on his back. Like it's just a T Rex with and long arms, right? Like it's, right. it's very long legs. Yeah, long. They they go on for miles. It's a cross between a T Rex and Godzilla. Nothing. Yes. God. Design wise, Godzilla. It, every other incarnation of Godzilla actually a mutated dinosaur. This right. one that actually looks like a mutated dinosaur. Oh, but wait, Cyraptor! I'm about to call you out on your bullshit. I. I it's technically. Iguana hallux is on the outside. No, they're not. It's not a hallux then. Well, it's it's that similar type of claw. Boom. I'm looking at images. How come this Godzilla doesn't have the cute little ears? Godzilla had cute little ears? Yeah. Sometimes. The new one doesn't. The best ones do. The negative one, Godzilla doesn't have any ears. It's sad. The Ameri- the uh, the other American Godzilla doesn't have any ears. So at this point, I looked at ears. <laughs> <laughs> what did you look at? I looked at a little synopsis of Godzilla minus one, and it's just worded very silly. What the fuck is Godzilla minus one? It's, it's the newest, newest Godzilla, Godzilla movie. movie coming out soon, or has come out. What? Godzilla appears like in post World War II Japan, which is at its low point at zero, and knocks the country down one into the negatives. Oh, I thought it was just like, <laughs> I don't think that's what? the intention with the name. It's a, it's a, is this a monster a verse movie? Universe this is a live Godzilla. action. This is a Japanese live action movie. I think it comes oh, out in December. Okay. Yeah, Godzilla appears immediately after world war two, as opposed oh. to like 10 years after. Okay. Okay. I thought the minus one meant like, you know how the, the origin is minus one. zero. Yeah. The, the, Godzilla that's year zero. This is, before the origin story yeah so at this point in the film we're introduced to uh the mayor of new york who is siskel and ebert as a gay couple um i think ebert is technically the mayor ebert is the mayor but siskel is the guy like the deputy mayor right also i for anyone who's not familiar with the film i have to stop and say when mortis is calling the other guy homer that's not actually homer and he's calling this guy no, Ebert. It's... This character is actually named Mayor Ebert and looks like Roger Ebert. Yes. And who is Who's... Roger Ebert for those of us that are young? I oh, mean, yeah. I know for the audience. Roger Ebert is a, a movie critic. Gene Siskel and Roger Ebert, famous uh, hosts of the TV show At the Movies, I think it was called. Uh, they were writers for Chicago newspapers. Uh, and they're like the most famous movie reviewers of all time. Yes. Both now and do dead. You know the they were chosen for this. They were chosen because they panned um, Roland Emmerich's previous film, Independence Day. They and sure it's did. Like revenge, they sure did. It's a revenge plot. Man, I, I sort of meant to look up, you know, at the Another movies for Godzilla. Like, 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 that I like, only stoop to. I would like to see their reaction to it if they even have bothered to dignify it if you would like to put it on the screen i've put a a comparison picture (laughs) in the discord thank you slushy uh the film on the bottom (laughs) of this image so it's hard to tell uh so they they basically instantly evacuate new york without really any kind of trouble or issue like they say we're going to evacuate it oh that's going to be hard 
no, but we have to do it. And then, like in the next scene, New York is evacuated. Like that's my memory of how that all of all of Manhattan out. is now hanging out in New Jersey. Right. Yeah, get out of here. And it's not an issue. Um, it's kind of an issue. I don't want them there. <laughs> so New York is evacuated, except for the evil French who are hiding in our midst, pretending to be our taxi drivers and our soldiers. Um, I don't understand what was happening with this plot thread. Like why? I, I mean, what? I can explain it. I mean, I understand. So like Godzilla's from the French Polynesian nuclear tests and the French yeah. want to cover up Godzilla, I guess. But like, it's just weird. <laughs> it's just I, like I just, a weird he, script. France thing. feels responsible and they want to cover up their mistakes and not let people know and tie it back to France. It'll make France look bad. And he's pretty much a French spy MIB type. And it's, yeah, it's Jean Reno, the famous Jean Reno, great actor, um, wasted on this film. <laughs> he's the leader of the French spies. But the, uh, the thing is, if I may, they don't do anything. I, I'm, in the movie, I guess I may not. Anyway, what? what are you I, I, I looked up the the uh, Roger Ebert re- review of Godzilla. He gave it one and a half stars, and was disappointed that he was not crushed to death in the film. Yeah, that was a little weird. It's a little weird that they sort of they didn't get killed, and they also were not sort of made fools of. They were just like a gay couple, not explicitly, but it seemed that way. <laughs> There was like the one scene where the Ebert or the Siskel did the thumb. He's like, here's what I think of your plan. Thumbs up, nah, thumbs down. Like that was the only. Oh, I missed that. That was the only. <laughs> yeah, that was like scene. right at the end. Oh, that was right at the end. Cause mayor Ebert was like, oh, my campaign for reelection. Mayor Ebert. <sighs> this is almost Godzilla. Like a, this is almost like a comedy. Like it, there's, there's not like an ounce of seriousness in the entire. Well, like nobody. Yeah, it's an action comedy. Like, it's nobody is ever Olympic like movie. at threat. Nobody's ever threatened. Nobody <laughs> dies except for the French soldiers. Oh, there's so many. Yeah, the, 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 the French, the French soldiers, Jean Pierre, Jean Luc, and and Jean something else. A helicopter pilot was eaten. Oh yeah, some of the helicopter pilots die. Right. Jean so Philippe, Jean Pierre, Jean Luc, and then Jean Renault's character was named Philip or Philippe. Philippe. <laughs> so what was yeah. the uh, what was the helicopter pilot's name? What did it sound as? There was one that was. Helmet? They all snooze. had sil- yeah. One remember? was snooze. Snooze. Yeah, yeah. One yeah, one at the end the was like Trundle or something. Tr- yeah. uh, they all had Trundle. like words on their helmet. Trundle. <laughs> 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 um. So they're looking for Godzilla. The army is looking for Godzilla. The French are lurking in the city looking for Godzilla. Godzilla has disappeared. Yes, he's disappeared. The 400 foot lizard has disappeared. The army has barricades up. Matthew Broderick is looking for Godzilla. He walks by an open sewer and he hears Godzilla and it does the Jaws <laughs> zoom on Matthew Broderick, which I thought like. Which is like the second or third Jaws zoom in the film? Was it? Because it. Did yeah, because it, it the... did it to the fisherman. I oh, think. okay. I mean, that would that would make sense. That right. that makes sense. But like to do it, here I don't remember doesn't... what the first one was, but I very clearly remember the Matthew Broderick one was the second. one. Okay, well, it does the jaws zoom on Matthew Broderick because he heard Godzilla in a sewer. Um, so like this is where they sort of like fight, right? Like the first army fight with Godzilla. Well, that would have been I think before, because so. doesn't he escape into the... Was it before? Underground. Like, where was the... This is leading up to the helicopter part? There's two helicopters. No, the, the, I think the helicopter had already happened by this point. Because I think he, like, escapes underground. Like, when he first there takes are, landfall... No, the helicopter... No? I have the helicopter chase later in my notes. There's two helicopter chases, though. Right, well, there's there one much later, guy. but I think this is... All right. All right. I don't know, but anyway, there's... After- if you, I didn't take notes, so... There's a scene where Godzilla is fighting the army, and the army, like, shoots a lot of missiles at Godzilla, and Godzilla ducks, which is, like, his main power in the film, is Godzilla dodges things. And well, he's very... Yeah, he's very... Uh, well, he doesn't have atomic breath. 
he I, sort I of has going. atomic breath. Let's talk about no. that. There, okay. <laughs> there's two scenes in the movie. There's huge controversy. There's two scenes where Godzilla roars on cars and the cars explode and the fire from the cars sort of turns into fire breath. Um, I remember what is going on there. I remember when this came Secondhand out, Secondhand atomic breath. One of my friends saw this movie and I was, and I was asking him like, so was it good? It was like Godzilla. Cause we had, we would watch, I would force him to watch my Godzilla VHSs all the time. Um, and he's like, eh, I don't, it wasn't there. There was kind of a scene where he breathed fire though. He kind of like breathed on some cars and the cars exploded. It kind of looked like fire. I don't, I don't know if he's like breathing gasoline or like flammable fumes or what, (laughs) but like, so that was my exposure to that concept. This was an online thing. Like people were mad about this online. They seem to be, but after watching it now, Mortis, what do you think? Was he breathing fire or just like what was happening? I don't think he was breathing fire. No, his power well, is, the sec- is like the second time he like very clearly breathe, breathes fire. No, he doesn't. No, no? He, he roars on some shit and then it explodes. Yeah, he has the second, second time too. Fire I think so. Yes, he never. Hmm. I'm sure Wikizilla has a, a powers listed in the, the info box. Somewhere. But like most of the destruction that occurs in this movie is the army missing Godzilla with missiles. Like, Godzilla doesn't really fuck that much shit up. I don't There's, think. There is one time where he escapes into a broken up building from a helicopter, or from two helicopters, and then somehow comes out of the building behind them. Yeah, he's he's like oh, a... Yeah. <laughs> he's like a horror I, oh, creature. Is, I Like, yeah. just diving into a building, first of all, is like... Right. I know this was pre 9-11, but I don't think that works out like physics wise. Um this was the worst attack since the first attack on the World Trade Center, they say oh, in the yeah, movie. They, do, they do say that. The worst attack on New York since the World Trade Center bombing. Mm-hmm. Which if you're Did they say that? Oh my if you're god. Not, they did say that. If you don't know your history, you might be a little confused. Because I feel like the World Trade Center bombing gets forgotten in lieu of the World Trade Center. <laughs> Getting hit by an airplane and falling down. <laughs> Two airplanes. Well, each of them get hit. Right. By one. Yeah. And we know about this from Fallout Boy. Yeah. <laughs> they don't the mention song. Godzilla ninety eight weirdly. It's one of the say? one of the tragedies of uh the late twentieth century. Metroid though. Um Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> So I don't like, does the helicopter, like there's this nighttime army fight and then like that goes into the helicopter chase, right? Isn't it just nighttime the time for the rest time. of the movie? Most. Isn't it just well, rainy yes. and nighttime it, for the entire duration? I guess because it's real time, right? But it's, Is it, I mean, did, it's did one night. On probably. One day? Yeah. Um, so it's becoming night. There's a night fight with Godzilla. Then we were talking about earlier, uh, there's, there's a helicopter chase. The, the helicopters are chasing Godzilla through canyons of red lit, very, very tall buildings. <laughs> like it's all models. And I thought, again, I, I think the effects that aren't Godzilla are really good. And like every time Godzilla was on screen, it was just like, oh, right. This looks like junk. But I thought that was a good scene. I, a good little sequence. The chase. I don't know. It's one of the better action sequences in the movie, but it's not. That's not saying much, right? Yeah. Uh, but it's like at some point. Also, um, I, I'm on Wikizill and mm-hmm. under the the powers section, and it's uh, they call it power breath. Power breath. Power breath. <laughs> Good. It it was not originally <laughs> in the screenplay. His breath did not ignite. It became flammable in post production to placate outraged fans. Well, they did a bad job. But it is not that. Then it is still explicitly not fire breath. Yeah, there's no fire emerging from Godzilla's yeah. breath. 
Brett, they, they did a little trick. So, it looked like it did. so Godzilla, I guess, got wounded here because, like, Matthew Broderick picks up some blood, some goo from the street. And for some reason, he goes to a store and takes like a hundred pregnancy tests. And then he puts the Godzilla yeah. goo in the pregnancy like tests do. because he, he doesn't expect Godzilla to be pregnant, but Godzilla is pregnant. And they continue for the rest of the movie to say he is pregnant. <laughs> they never like switch Godzilla's pronoun. Well, he, no, he's asexual. Is that what it is? I was going to ask about that. That's a word they use, which is not correct. Right. Or that he, pr- he reproduces asexual. Right, but they say he's asexual. It's, I mean, it's, it's like, thing. so it's not like, it's Godzilla's not like a asexual. Jurassic Park situation where they turn into frogs and change gender. It's like Godzilla no, just that, created eggs that were fertilized on its own. Yeah, through the, uh, I thought he, he didn't change sexes right godzilla was just but it a, is asexual reproduced asexual asexual reproduction which doesn't it's supposed to be i don't know doesn't make a lot of sense i guess right i don't know well they needed to do their it's just an excuse to do here's what would velociraptor have, segment here's what would have made sense to me script wise <laughs> i was thinking about this in the in the shower atomic um, breath no what if there were just two Godzillas and they didn't realize, you know, what if there was a male and female Godzilla? Would it worked that because, work. because like one of the Godzillas basically dies. Isn't that a thing? And then like, <laughs> do they say that? That's Rodan. Yeah. That happens in Rodan. I'm that does happen Rodan, in Rodan. I'm also yeah. thinking the Mudos from Godzilla 2014. Right. But yeah. But like Godzilla basically is killed because Godzilla they think they kill Godzilla and it leaves the movie for a long time. And then like Godzilla comes back. Like what if they were like, Oh, we killed Godzilla. Oh, there's another God. Like that would have made more sense than we're doing better. And you could have had one bigger and one smaller. So people complaining about the size differences, <laughs> right? It could have explained why they like, me. why they jumped out of different places during the helicopter. It could have been clever. I don't know. Would have been fine. Um, did the submarines happen yet? I don't think so. I don't remember the sequence of events at all, dude. Well, like, I'm not. So here's the bad news for my notes. Um, the next note that I have is I started hanging out with Bob and stopped paying attention. So cool. I just started hanging out with my so, cat. Someone else got to take over. Um, my, Ollie, I can take over from my notes. Godzilla notes. Still bad. Still mad that it turns into Jurassic Park. End of notes. Like what i remember so they basically kill godzilla i don't remember how is this the submarines do they do it with submarines or no that's way later the submarines are way later how do they kill godzilla they just beat the shit out of it with something now they shoot missiles at him at one point yeah but he dodges a lot of missiles maybe he just fails to dodge um so they find out godzilla's pregnant um Matthew Broderick's tape gets leaked to the news, and Kent Brockman calls him Gondzilla. Um, and Matthew Broderick is disgraced and kicked off the army team, and the French Secret Service take him under their wing and start... I, I don't know. They need him for something i don't know but his expertise his expertise which i guess he's determined that like godzilla is pregnant and that godzilla is a burrower he says that and godzilla is hungry for fish so they like i'm i'm going off memory here they they end up in madison square garden where there are a million godzilla eggs that hatch velociraptors is like basically the next thing I remember. I don't know. 200 of them, I believe. Something like that. And this Start is Dark and Mortis. Right. This is after Matthew Broderick was like, I don't know, a dozen eggs. A lizard can lay up to a dozen eggs at a time. You only see one and then it pans then, out. Then Janet Reno turns on the lights in the in Madison Square Garden 
Nobody caught that, huh? Uh, and Janet and Reno does more. Uh, Janet, J- whatever his name is, John Reno. <laughs> John <Jean> Reno. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And then there's more eggs. There's more eggs. So right, and then they say there's a lot of eggs for those of you who weren't watching. So this part of the movie went on forever and fish. was really boring. Um, it just like turned into aliens if it sucks. So then they then they run away from the aliens in Madison Square Garden, and then they uh or the then they get out and maybe they blow up blow it up or something. Yeah, the army's like and then the they movie bomb ends. It. No, it the doesn't. About, no, I'm I, the movie's about to end. You think the movie's over? Yeah. And then Godzilla adult comes out from the bed not and she's pissed and then she chases them in a in a cab and uh they go over the brooklyn not the brooklyn bridge if, the other one i think is it, is i don't the know brooklyn washington bridge, bridge? The, the washington bridge i think it's, it's the, the golden bridge, gate bridge island. probably right it's the golden gate bridge it's and they, in new york he gets caught up in the in the strings and they blow him up with missiles and he's dead <laughs> yeah. so and then, and then there's a pre-credit sequence where there's one egg that survives, and that that egg yeah, had and, they start playing Godzilla. and then uh, the that Godzilla becomes the Godzilla from the animated series, and then oh is that they start playing, oh okay. they, and then they start playing Puff Daddy, and let's talk about the soundtrack for this movie. I, hang uh, on, hang on. I have I three want- things. <laughs> I have three things I want to talk about. I don't one, want to get blamed for two five-hour-long episodes. It's fine. I understand. One, uh, my cat... I want to say that my cat was really oh, yeah. sitting in my chair like a human watching this movie wrapped. And I, I thought that was... He was... He was loving it. He was it. much more interested in it than I was. <laughs> I thought it was very cute. This is a movie for cats. Um, the next thing. When they're on the bridge, uh, I did recognize... The Matthew Broderick saying, gun it, gun it, go, 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 go. Uh, that's a that's one of the lines from the pinball machine, the Sega pinball machine oh. of the movie. Uh, I don't remember why it does it in the pinball, probably just where you launch the ball. Um, and then when they're when they're doing the chase on the bridge and the bridge is like collapsing under Godzilla, that's it's like a mirror of the old man scene when the old man is running from Godzilla on the dock. And the, the dock is collapsing behind him. I thought that was masterfully done cinematically. But the I think goes. That, was probably, that was probably just a coincidence. It may have been. Yeah. But sure. So what about the soundtrack? This is a soundtrack movie. <laughs> it it, it I, it's got Puff Daddy, I believe it was Puff Daddy at the time. Sounds correct. Sampling uh cashmere by Led Zeppelin. Fantastic. <laughs> Yeah, it had it had a remix of Brain Stew by Green Day. I oh, I remember. Right, like the one remix thing is at one point Godzilla roars, isn't it? <laughs> Probably. I think that's like the one difference. And then it has a cover of uh, Heroes by David Bowie by the Wallflowers, which is much, much better than the original. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> How old was Brain Stew at this point? Like at least three years, right? I when think did, it was on. It was on. Ins- it was on was Insomniac. It, uh, Insomniac. How yeah, that was when did five? I think. Yeah, so. like that. That's. They were Green Day was still making music, weren't they? Or had they not? Did they like take a break? Yes, they were. Uh, Nimrod came out the year before, so you'd think they want to put something right <laughs> on that. But no. And then they kind of, this is, then they kind of, this is like the beginning of their downfall before American Idiot resurrected their career like six years afterwards. And then they squandered all that too. And now they're, they're just putting out like Uno Dos Trey and shit like that. And no one likes them anymore. Well, I certainly don't. This has been the Green Day Minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have Bonesy revisit this part. Um, Green Day hasn't been good since 358 over 2 Slap Happy Days or whatever oh, come the on. that album is called. Dookie's, Dookie's okay. Dookie's, what the fuck are you talking about? Dookie's like a classic. It's okay. 
Dookie's a all time classic album. I uh, I actually prefer Sticky Little Fingers, which is the band that uh, Stinky Green Day. Sticky Little Fingers. It's uh, yes, it's the band that Green Day really built their career off the backs of, and were inspired by. Anyway, <laughs> that's enough of that bit. Um, I think American Idiots good. Dookie rules. What are you that's talking it. about? Do me, me? Okay, I don't know. Just I. Yeah, Sire After, what the fuck? Yeah, you. What are you, I, you I, shitting on Dookie, Dookie? I know. Dookie's okay. It's the one. It's their Warning one. Warning sucks. Album. We have to have this guy back on the show. Yes. What? He's a regular now, every week. Um, It's all going to be three Is plus the David hours. Bowie thing? Yeah. Because the David Bowie thing. It's not even that different. It's barely a cover. It's just not David Bowie singing. It's the instrumentation is like identical. It's not even like a twist. On it's it. like a Weird Al I song. Like, so I don't like. I don't know how you can. Would you prefer it if that one weird goth German lady? Sang it's not it? like they butchered it. Nina Hagen. God. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't like her Ziggy, but I just thought it was interesting. And and that's Morris's wife, so I'm not going to say anything bad about her. Show my T-shirt. <laughs> I, I did like show my T-shirt though. It was funny. So is there any? Is there any... Show my T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> is there any closing thoughts on Godzilla? I don't know. Don't watch Here's it. my closing thoughts. Yeah, I understand that uh, you guys all vehemently hated it and wish it was dead. And would like to see Roland Emmerich in a mask great. I didn't but, say that. <laughs> that last part I do not agree with. That last line. I I saw this movie when I was young, and it's bad. But it's fun. I think it's okay for there to be bad fun movies. I think it's very fun. I understand. I understand when is that it you fun, guys have this slushy? connection to Godzilla that I don't have. What do you mean? When is I, it I'm, fun? It's fun the entire the thing, time. I, I don't think it's a bad movie because it's a bad Godzilla I, movie. I think it's a bad movie completely on its own. I think yeah. It's right. yeah, I don't. Movie. I don't think it's. I don't think it's good. I think it's, but it's moderately fun. entertaining when it's just Godzilla. Like the the Velociraptor stuff was like. Oh, that's from that's a so from a pacing perspective was like. How on earth did you fucking write this and shoot this and leave this in the movie? Like it just felt so pointless and like, like this is not I, divorced from the point of the movie and like I like was impossible to be invested in it. But like the Godzilla stuff, apart from the effects not aging well, I think we're like I don't is, think they were that all good right. when it came out. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. I don't know. I really enjoy Roland Emmerich's disaster films, even though they're all kind of bad. Okay. Except for ID4. ID4 is real good. But, like, Day After Tomorrow, I love. I Fucking 21, 2012, I love. I would be interested in seeing Day After Tomorrow just for the I R- remember thinking 2012 wasn't that bad. Yeah, 2012 is just like. 2012 is very self aware. Was that John Cusack's last it. role? It was role. John Cusack, yeah. It was John Cusack. Yeah. Was not... Well, it could have been. I, I he don't want to make any roles. commentary on John Cusack's. Well, yeah, it was It was probably because of 20. Was that after um, Runaway was that? Jury? Was it John Cusack or, or Keanu Reeves in uh, The Day the Earth Stood Still? That was Keanu Reeves. That was Keanu Reeves. Okay. Sorry, Keanu. <laughs> you don't deserve to be compared to John Cusack. He blocked me on Twitter and he's here talking about free speech. Anyway. Mm-hmm. Do you want to watch 2012 next week? Like not as a not, not as a main film, really. But just in general. I mean Day After Tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, Day After Tomorrow, sorry. We should watch 2012 as well, because it's mm-hmm. absurd. I, it is I absurd. Really think it's like three hours long. Though. I got maybe like like maybe let's keep it to maximum one Roland Emmerich movie like a month. <laughs> Yes. No, yeah, that's fine. I just mean in general. I just mean in general. I hate them all. So I hate them all. I hate them. You don't hate them. You hate 2012. You don't have to be there. You don't have to be there. You skip it. Yeah, I'm the new fucking third host. Stay home. (laughs) That's not what I'm saying. Get out of here, Cyraptor. (laughs) 
<laughs> what? <laughs> you Bowie-hating monster. I don't hate Bowie. He just I'm really, sorry. really loves the wallflowers. I do. Well, I don't love the wallflowers, but... I would recommend Godzilla. I'd rather listen to the wallflowers. I to watch another Godzilla movie instead, like the original. None I, of them are going to have the same character. That's true. That's what you want to avoid. I have two you things. You want to see that. that same character. You don't want to see Mike Totopoulos. What are you talking about, Sire After? I have I have two things I want to talk about. Finish your finish your banter. It's over. It's I'm done. I'm saying watch the original Godzilla, and if you want to watch an American one, watch the 2014 one. It's not the same. Yeah. It's not the same. Did, don't, what, yeah, that's good. That's a good thing. So, Okay, that's a perfect segue because in comparison to Godzilla 2014, which I, I feel was made by people who had respect for Godzilla, mm-hmm. th- this doesn't really feel like it was made by anyone who gave a shit about Godzilla other than the bankability of the name. Uh, to me, this is 1,000% Jurassic Park was a huge success. Let's make another Jurassic Park. That's why you get the Raptors. Because fucking baby Godzilla's was never like human sized baby Godzilla's was never a thing. It was. And Godzilla. No, fucking wasn't. There's was no baby Godzilla. There's no it happens sp- once. Oh, not, I'm not talking about Dream Minya. That's what <laughs> No, I'm not talking about Dream Menu either. There's there's that one Japanese like there was little guys sometimes. There was 90 like there's that 90s late 90s movie where like baby Godzilla is walking around with like a girl, right? I can't remember which one it is. There's a story. That's, what? what? <laughs> that Rex movie we're going to No, watch. I mean it's like Rex but it's in a Godzilla movie. You're, Godzilla Jr. You're you're ta- yes, you're talking about and I'm surprised Count isn't saying this. That's make a Godzilla, Godzilla too. Make a Godzilla too. Yeah, he is. That's he's one. He's one big child Godzilla, and then in the next movie, he's minion sized. Right, but the, but it's not. The, he's not running. He's he's friendly. He's a friendly. I'm not. I'm talking about right antagonistic yes. human sized Velociraptor Godzillas. Right. It is one thousand percent Jurassic Park. Well, yeah, I mean, for Godzilla he, to have 3,000 offspring to begin with it, is, like, weird. Right. That's the They just part. wanted They wanted to do Velociraptors. And they could kind of do it with baby Godzillas. And then they, you have... absolutely wanted to do Velociraptors, and I hated it in the theater, because they're like, this is just like Jurassic Park. I came here right. for Godzilla. And I yeah. like Jurassic Park, but I didn't want them to, you know, I was pissed. Well, but well, it's a bad, the it's a weird bad thing is, is that Jurassic Park. <laughs> the, this movie is as... That too. This movie is as far away from Brain Stew as Brain Stew is from Jurassic Park, right? Like, <laughs> this is. <laughs> I don't know what that has to do with anything, but. Well, why? Well, why? Jurassic why Park would they want to do Jurassic Brain Park Stu's again? 90. It's been like six years. I don't know. Well, exactly. I mean, it. Like I said, the the, the teaser aired before the Lost World. Yeah. I mean, Jurassic Park and w- was still firmly like in. Why'd you do it, Roland? Culture- consciousness at this point. why'd you do it like this roland um and then the, the fucking chase scene lifted a whole bunch of shots directly from the one from jurassic park must go faster must oh, go you're faster talking about and, the, and the car yeah yeah and and the oh i did want to mention was there, was when, there actually a, a rear view mirror shot i don't think so somebody joked about I, it but i didn't see i it. did but it was i don't think no. it was actually in there um i did want to mention on the it, in the final scene where the Godzilla is eating the taxi. They do have a practical Godzilla head that actually is eating a real taxi. And like, it huh? didn't, it didn't look great. The babies are sometimes practical also. Right. It's Some, frequently. yeah. Like when John Reno has to kick and, them, they are occasionally they're not, they're practical. Yeah. R- really badly composited. Yeah. Like that, that's the, the biggest problem with the special effects is that the compositing just, they don't look like the, the, the contrast will be off. Yeah. Uh, it's just really poorly done. And I, you know, it was still early CG to be doing a, a full organic living being as 
a full CG character. It was still fairly new, even in 98. Um, Jurassic Park, granted, was still five years old at this point, but still did a better job of like, they did, um, uh, shit, what's it? What's the physical props? It's the practical, practical effects yeah. whenever they could. Yeah. And like when they had to do the T Rex CG, that was always obscured with darkness and rain, which I, I guess so was this. And they oh, just except did, for the daytime. Did it worse. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, the Brachiosaurus was in the daytime, but if, if I was talking about the, the shots of Godzilla in the daytime oh, walking around, those are just kind of muddy. Yeah. Um, it is raining, I guess. Maybe. Yeah. So, so I, it wasn't done. I don't know who did the effects, but I assume it was an ILM. Who was it? I don't it was bad. Try house in star CGI. Don't tell me it was ILM. It could have been. I don't think so. I would remember that. <sighs> Visual effects by Volker Engel. Oh, there you go. I'm not sure if that's what a, else have they done? I don't know if that's a, a person or a, studio if, person, or a yeah. studio. Yeah. Uh, huh. It's German well, for, for the angel people. I guess <laughs> I don't know. Uh, doesn't have on Wikizilla. Volker Engel is a red link. It does not have a page. Oh, there you go. So. I'm looking power, at his, power it. It is a man. Yeah. It is a man. He led visual effects for this ID four 2012 White House down. Well, then why is Universal why is Soldier Independence Day so in, much better <laughs> looking? Well, I don't Independence know. Day I think is. Just, just static ships. There's no like, you know. Well, there's still there's right. there's creatures. There's all the creatures are practical though, right? Yeah, I remember them being. Before. Yeah, I don't so, know. He was just he was trying out this digital thing. In, in fact, I think a lot of the ships were practical. Probably. He and Roland Emmerich are probably childhood friends or some shit. They're both from so, Germany. Yeah, around the same age. Yeah, I, now they think about it. Almost all of ID 4s special effects would have been practical. And C- Centropolis is apparently Roland Emmerich's uh, twenty twelve like, in-house personal Maybe. effects thing. Convincing too, but that was. We'll like, have to watch Moonfall like, too. What's Moonfall? Another Emmerich movie? The one where the moon Emmerich falls. Movie. I, I, I would watch that. Just because. Oh, that's from last year. He didn't do the core, did he? Because that feels like a very. He did not do the disaster core. movie in the same vein. Uh, my fi- can I say my final remarks? Yeah, on Godzilla. Yeah. Just, By I, all means. I led my my text review of here. Uh, the reason I think this fails as a Godzilla film is that, in contrast to every other Godzilla film, where Godzilla is like depicted as an individual with some degree of like sapience not you know he's not talking except in that one movie where he does talk but you know he he, there's there's an intelligence there there's an intentionality there it seems to have um, a goal yeah even if that goal is just destruction yeah godzilla and godzilla 1998 is just a scared animal in the city you know like yeah i mean it could pretty much be a tidal wave or a hurricane well, well, sorry. Well, let me tell you about the day like, after tomorrow. You can't. No, you can't test a tidal wave for pregnancy. Sure, and you want to have the little babies, but baby like tidal waves. There's no small waves. That would be cool. <laughs> well, we're gonna make that after Schlubby Adventure. What? Free stereo four. Well, we've oh, got oh. yeah, we've got in in the works in our script writing house that we've got that we're gonna call something probably just remove tray from remove film from tray films remove tray we've from got, ass <laughs> <laughs> we've got puppet master 17 we've got untitled schlubby adventurer film and now we've it's pre- got stereo four pre- ser- well, no pre stereo four is not gonna ha- have a schlubby additional adventurer why because i'm gonna it's gonna be completely different you want to do gonna, Armenian raisin farmers? You want to go back to that? Yeah, and it 
the, the Armenian raisin farmers wasn't the funny part of that. It was a, a dog getting impregnated by a horny miniature dinosaur. Does it give That's birth? That's what I want to see. On the, I mean, I assume I've seen it that must, right? I don't know. It doesn't say. I assume. <sighs> Anyway, did, so what, <laughs> does, does anyone does anyone have a response to my final thoughts? I mean, I agree. I guess, yeah. Okay. Um, it doesn't really. I haven't. I haven't seen enough other fucking Godzilla films to argue with you about it. With the exception of the stuff that is lifted directly from Godzilla movies, it doesn't really feel like a Godzilla movie. Sorry, Raptor, would you recommend Godzilla 98? I I don't think so. Like I like I said, I think it's I think it's a bad movie on its own merits. I, I don't hate it because it's like not faithful to Godzilla necessarily. I, I think it's I don't know. I think it's a boring mess. Well, it's not that yeah. There's more boring actual Godzilla movies. Right. <laughs> But, Chris, would you recommend Godzilla 1998? If you one if you came five. if we were at Blockbuster and you came up to me with Godzilla in your hand, I wouldn't slap it out of your hand. Um, what would you slap out of someone's hand? Puppet Master Legacy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, I'd probably say, "Oh, cool, a new Puppet Master movie." <laughs> um. Slushy. Sleepless in recommend? Seattle. I would slap out of someone's hand. I I think I think if the, if the just fast forward through the baby Godzilla's part. I don't know. <laughs> like other than that, it's like it's not horrible to me. They kind of could have just left that out, honestly, and had still had like an hour and a half plus of movie. Yeah, like the movie is two like two hours and twenty minutes long or something, which is like it's too which long. is normal now, but back it's, then yeah. that was really long. Anyway. Get rid of the baby Godzilla stuff. I agree. Slushy, do you recommend Godzilla 98? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's fun. All right. What about you, Count? Uh, no. I, think we count already. <laughs> I thought Count that. already went. I didn't. I don't know. Do you want to hate on Matthew Broderick? Count? Yeah, he killed those sucks. people, which I didn't he's know. He's a about. murderer in real life. Who it wasn't murder. He literally it was vehicular manslaughter. Well, um, it's an important legal distinction for well, the he was drunk, which podcast. is really irresponsible. I, now, I'm a big, I'm a big fan of Austin Powers, and that has two murderers in the cast. So, <laughs> wait, who? Uh, random the guy who plays random cast, and who else? Uh, Robert Wagner. I've never Who's seen that? Natalie Wood. Uh, I've yeah. never seen those films. Number two. Don't know. Um, oh, I would in a heartbeat do an Austin Powers episode. Yeah, we we, we should do that because I will be not. I will not subject anyone to the sequels, but I think the first one is a genuinely good. I like the first two heartfelt film. I like all three of them, but I think there's diminishing returns. I feel like the joke is like worn by the third, especially one. the third one. Yeah. Well, they literally reuse like multiple joke sequences from the first two and the third. I wanted to say well, I want to have Seth Green, right? They all have Seth they Green. Have Seth Green. Oh. I just want to say I agree with Cyraptor. It's not so much that it's a bad adaptation of Godzilla, which although it is, because I like weird adaptations. I like the Mario movie and the live action one. So I can get around something not being true to what the source material is. I just think it's too long, poorly paced, not entertaining to me. Uh and I hate it as a child, and I, it, I'm i glad I still hate it now. I don't hate it. I want to be clear. I don't hate it. Can I be clear? I it's do hate it. it. It's not Whiplash. <laughs> I still, I still no, don't know what this whiplash, whiplash thing is. We're not watching Whiplash. Okay. Yeah, you wouldn't fine. like it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to, probably. Sounds I mean, like check it out yourself, it. maybe, but I'm not, was, it is I'm not subjecting poor Cyrap to that again. Was that fucking the same year as Birdman? It's around no, the same Oscars? time. I don't think so. It's think definitely it within a year. No, it's it was like 2013. And when it's, was Birdman? It's a movie, it's a movie yeah, it's where like a J. Year. Jonah Jameson 
uh, abuses Cyclops from <laughs> what from the most recent X Men movie. Uh, Wait, he's Apocalypse. Psych- yeah, he's younger. Cyclops. I'm pretty sure it's the same. Yeah, he yeah, is. Yeah. He was. Yeah, no, that doesn't Green sound very really cool. Was he and, Richards in the Fantastic Four reboot? Yes, I think so as well. Oh my god, um, I hate that guy, by the way. Whiplash almost as much as Matthew Broderick. Both came out within three days of each other. Damn. What? Okay. Hmm. Check Wikipedia. Well, why does, why United United States What's the connection, though? State. Like, Whiplash has a bunch of drums? Whiplash, October Whiplash 10. is about. There is no, the main character well, is yeah, a jazz drum. Seven days. Oh, okay. Not that say three days, seven he's days. Like, he's like at a jazz academy oh. and learning drums. Okay. And J.K. Simmons abuses him horribly because he sees potential in him. And his parenting style, quote unquote, is, you know, right. beat, beat right. the, beat the perfection into him kind of situation. Right. Doesn't also, sound like, oh, great. it's not a very, it's, it's a good movie. It's not a very fun movie. I watched it while playing Shadow Warrior. A lot of people love it. I'm one of the ones that don't. It's, it's really well received movie, but I'm I I'm very happy to have met Cyraptor, who is the rare whiplash hater like myself. I don't I don't go in for dramas, so with the exception I've of kinda, I've kind of spoiled my top five least favorite movies list by tipping my hand with Whiplash. Well. <laughs> I suppose uh, we we have no imminent plan for next week unless Furnace Leech Woman comes out. Um, but who knows? I I was really hoping to find on Google Images uh, Matthew Broderick mugshot that I could just have up for the end of you the never, episode. Never, here, but, even arrest him. Yeah, yeah, there, it doesn't exist. He so. killed a couple of people in Ireland and he paid a two hundred dollar fine. And he's ugly. He's a he's a perpetual little little teen. Oh, little, by the way, shithead. By the I hate way, Ferris Bueller. What what did you just say? I said I hate Ferris Bueller. Yes, <laughs> that's just on my top five least favorite movies list. You're well, that's right. Right. We're ruining I it. I think we have some things are in the common. Other, are the other three movies just movies with like Matthew Broderick types? No, you know I mean? I'll just I have. S- I have let's just okay. say let's get say your I'm, bottom five gonna, and we'll end on that. Yeah, my bottom five movies, which is actually like my here's my okay, my top top ten worst films. Okay. What uh-huh. you're you're hold on. You you'll see. Uh okay. <laughs> I already mentioned these aren't in any order, by the way. None of my none of my top ten is actually in order. Okay. Top top five, top ten, worst <laughs> Firefighter's least favorite movies of all time. Whiplash, as mentioned. Three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. I like that one. You like the film, or you like the choice? No, I like that movie. Okay. I don't know how you can hate Whiplash and like that movie, but okay. Uh, no, uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Hate it. This is gonna be this is gonna be real controversial. Groundhog Day. Ah, oh, I like Groundhog Day. Hmm. Okay. Rapey vibes from that movie. <laughs> uh, well, this one I doubt anyone will have heard of. Uh, it's called God Bless America. It's directed by Bobcat Goldthwait. I like that one. Really? Fuck yeah. you. Uh, it's about <laughs> it's about how deep how depraved society has become. So they, uh, Bill Murray's brother, not Joe Bob Murray or whatever. The Bill, other one, not the, the third Murray sibling and some little girl go on like a shooting rampage to demonstrate how depraved society has become. Uh, if that sounds interesting, if that sounds hypocritical to you, uh, maybe that's yes. the point. Nope, the point was it was com- played completely straight. Oh, well. Um, so th- that's one through five, and then six through ten are uh, every Christopher Nolan movie. Cyraptor. Come on. 
I think we're going to have to be best friends. <laughs> I hate Christopher Nolan. <laughs> <laughs> I, kn- I knew that already. I didn't I was, really um... see that. That one was. Had I not known that, I that would have been the one I was afraid to say. But that got to pass the Groundhog Day when. When Nolan was coming up in Count's stream last night, and I, I didn't realize he did Memento. I like Memento, but other I have than not that, seen Memento. To be fair, other than and that, I don't really like any of his uh, movies that I've seen. What the fuck was the magic one he did? The, the prestige? Uh, prestige. Did he do that? Yeah, yeah the, that's the one where like there's a hundred dead Wolverines in tubes at the yeah, end. Yeah, and David Bowie's in it. Yeah, yeah. that one sucks. Uh, I've never seen that. Real See that bad. one, I but I knew I knew about the tubes. I saw that before I knew who Christopher Nolan was. Really, it was like before I saw any Batman's. Uh, Someone in the chat I said he's an RC Michael Bay, and I just think that's perfect. A what? A, an RC? He's RC Michael Bay. Artsy, he's a Nazi. Okay. But Michael Bay makes fun movies. Yeah. Some of them are fun. Yeah. I don't really see any comparison here, but okay. You like, like the budget island budget things, but then Nolan gets praised for trying to be like smarter. Yeah, I don't like. I haven't seen the island, but I hate it in in concept because apparently Scarlett Johansson at her prime, her prime, offered to, offered to do a nude scene, and Michael Bay refused because he wanted oh my god a PG thirteen rating. And so have she, you seen Bad Boys? He, he stole that from me. Didn't she get naked in Lucy? No, it was. Was under she just the skin or something? Yeah, yeah under, the under the skin. The skin. Was, was, was she like trying to get ten, naked ten on film or after, something? Ten years after her prime, she was willing, Mortis. Oh. You don't like I Bad Boys one saying. and two, Cy Raptor? I haven't seen I'll, the Michael Bay movies. I've seen Armageddon. And Transformers one through four. Slushy, have you seen Bad Boys? And no, we they're Pain incredible. <laughs> they're, they're incredible movies. Bad Boys one and two are incredible. They are fucking amazing. Tune in next week when we watch Again, Bad my, Boys one and two. My my issue with Michael Bay is not the direction so much as the, the those are not the problems with the Transformers movies. I like the first one. I think did the first he do one the is, rock? Who did the rock? Yes, he did the cool. rock. Yes, I haven't seen the rock, and I really want to see that. We should watch it. I didn't love the rock. I rented first, it, and I like. I don't think I even it. finished it. I don't know. Something about. Did it he also do me. Con Air? Who did Con Air? Mm, I don't know. He might have done Con Air. What about the first Transformers movie, Sarah? After spit it out. I think it's like passable. Yeah. All right. What we have to finish your top ten. You did. Like, no, we were just doing the bottoms, I thought. Yeah, your top ten worst. Was Nolan number one? Six no, through ten, was, is, yeah, every, was, six through ten is every Nolan movie. If I have to name them, I would say Inception. Oh, okay. No, it's, wasted, fine, it's fine. Inception, Wasted Potential. Interstellar, Wasted Potential. Well, Inception uh, is just the worst paprika. That's true. We should watch paprika. Pepper. Oh, I, thought, I thought that was the whiny one for a second. Uh, no, oh, that's, that's the other movie. I like Dark, Knight, Dark Knight Rises. I thought you hadn't seen Paprika. Blows ass. No, I, I guess I'm thinking of me. And, <laughs> uh, why have I seen so many of his movies? Because I've stopped they're watching big them. and they need to. The, the society says you need to see the Nolan movie. I'm yeah, not like go to Nolan Tenet movie. or Interstellar because fuck them. I'm just done with them. I'd rather stick needles in my dick than some Barbenheimer. <laughs> I don't. Do you, was that? <laughs> Would you rather play Atari oh, or go I'm, see I'm Barbenheimer? <laughs> I'd rather play Atari. You don't All have right. to twist my arm for that. <laughs> uh, I didn't hate Batman Begins. Uh, Dark Knight won. I'll give a pass. Oh, Barbenheimer because Barbie, right? Almost, almost decent. Mostly not. I just hate his take on Batman. Did. I just, I don't like it. Batman's supposed yeah. to be dark and gritty and brutal and brooding and sad and well angry. he can be but it should also be weird and the nolan movies are not weird 
There's and only Gotham been one, should be gross and dingy. There's and only one good Batman movie. That's not true. But there's ahead. only one good Batman movie. There's like three. There's four. There's two good Batman movies. There's four three. good Batman movies, at least. Probably five. I haven't seen the Adam West one. Batman it's probably Forever. Good, though. I'm counting Adam West, the first Batman and, the, and the two Keatons. Batman Forever. Uh huh. And Batman Mask of the Phantasm. Well, we can't count animated. Are we counting animated? Of course. That's the only good Batman. Well, then there's it's a the only of good then incarnation like of Batman. Five or six, if we count animated. But there's, as far as live action, Adam West and the Keatons. I don't actually think Batman. Batman Forever is a. Was my child.